Hello everyone, welcome to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and today we're playing some Too Many Bones. Unbreakable. Too Many Bones. It's been a while since we've played one of these games. This should be interesting. Uh, yeah, but uh, hopefully it's like riding a bike, since we've streamed a bajillion hours of Too Many Bones a few years back. Uh, this is one of my favorite games, and uh, we'll be playing it today. Um, but yeah, please excuse the uh, rust, because uh, we'll be shaking it off today in the stream as we get back into it. Um, I finally got my third wave, or nope, 
fourth wave, fourth wave, right? This is the fourth wave of content for Too Many Bones. Uh, I got it just like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago now. And uh, so I was like a little late on the party thanks to adding on a dice tower to the order, which supposedly delayed it by months, uh, which sucks, but uh, that's how it is. So uh, yeah, I'm now a year older than when I expected to have the game, but full disclosure, I paid for the game and all the content we're going to be playing with. Um, yeah, I think all of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did not provide, it was not provided a review copy, but it was offered one, but I declined because I'd already backed it um, on a previous stream with you guys. And uh, it's finally here. So my pledge is here. We're going to play the game today. Um, we're going to try it out. We're going to discuss it as we play. As usual, I'm going to be open, honest, uh, unfiltered, unedited uh, as we play. So I apologize in advance for that. Um, but yeah, we'll be discussing things as we play. This is going to be probably a fairly long playthrough, as you probably see if you're watching this later and you clicked on it. This is not trying to get this played as fast as possible, as quick as possible, not trying to be first with the shortest video, with the most clickbaity thumbnail uh, or title. We are going to enjoy this like a fine wine, being one of my favorite games, a long, deep, strategic, brain burning fun dice chucker. Um, and we're going to have fun with the chat. We're going to do polls as we go. We're going to play along. We're going to look up rules if we need to. Um, we're going to bitch about the game. We're going to have fun with the game. We're going to ride a roller coaster all the way to the end and hopefully make it to the tyrant and win. Hopefully. Uh, but we're trying to gale today against rock and roll. Uh, <laughs> uh, one of the tyrants that I saw was recommended online to try first. So again, I'm just getting back into it. If you're watching this later, you see we have a thousand playlists, tons of streams playing with many different gear locks, many different modes, many different player counts. Uh, you know, all the way true solo up to four player, all the different boxes, undertow, chorus at splice and dice, age of tyranny campaigns coming out the wazoo. Um, all those should be down below in the video description. There's playlists for all that stuff. Uh, should be 20 strong. Too many bones in there too, if you're interested in that. Uh, basically, too many bones pocket edition we played recently on the channel. We have a playthrough of that. Showing that off uh, if you're if you're a too many bones fan. But uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Weird reading this rule book and playing this game. It's like blast from the past. Wow. Yeah, we played a ton of this stuff in 2019, 2020 on the channel. Uh, and yeah, it's back. It's back. Good times. So yeah, feel free to yell at me as you're watching long, uh, along or watching later. Timestamps down below. If I, I make any goofs or, or you have any thoughts or anything, let me know. Obviously, if you're watching live, feel free to ask questions as we're playing along. I know not everyone watching knows the game. Um, but I'm not going to teach it fully here or anything like that. I'm sure there by now there's tons of how to play videos out there, uh, teaching the game, teaching the gear locks and all that stuff. Uh, we'll discuss the gear lock. We'll discuss strategy as we play. We'll make decisions together. Some I will ignore you guys and make my own decisions as usual. Um, but that's how we'll do it and uh, play along and we'll have some fun. But yeah, call out any, any rules, goose, ask any questions you're not sure of, cause I'm not sure. I'll be honest. This is a beast of a game. I've played many other games recently. Haven't played this one in years, it feels like. Maybe a year and a half or so. Maybe two years now. I don't even know. Uh, since we played that pop-up book. Even then, I remember feeling very un uh, unsure of the game. Um, which probably shows in that playthrough too. But uh, yeah, we're getting the game back on the table. And since I have all of the gear locks, all the gameplay content from the last crowdfunding campaign, which I believe completes uh, Too Many Bones, uh, I plan to play through a bunch of it on the channel if you guys are interested. I know this game's not the new hotness. Elder Scrolls is on the way. Uh, I'm sure with the next couple years, Chip will announce Too Many Bones Second Edition. It's just going to happen. You can tell the, the, it's in the air. Um, but this being the final wave of content um, means people kind of maybe don't care. And it's also like expansion number 75, 78, 70. Like it's, it, I'm just joking. But the stuff I'm playing with today is expansion content. It is standalone, the stuff I'm playing with right now. Um, but it is kind of targeted at more experienced Too Many Bones fans, people who've already been collecting the game and stuff like that, so... Um, I expect less people to be interested, because we've already played a bunch of Too Many Bones on the channel, there's tons of content out there, it's not the new hotness game, even though this box is like just came out this year, it's still Too Many Bones, right? So, if you guys are interested, hit that like button, thank you to all 19 of you who clicked the like button already, it helps other people find this stuff on YouTube. Um, but I'm going to play it as long as you guys are interested in it. I do want to try it all out, but I don't have to try it all on stream, right? I can play it with friends and family. I can get four gear locks on the table easy at some family and friend nights, uh, since we played this game off stream quite a bit, uh, in the past and have a bunch of players that have played it before. So I, I can easily play this game not on stream. So feel free to share the video. If you guys want more of it, let me know you like it. Share, uh, hit the like button is what I should be saying. Um, cause it helps other people find it. So I appreciate it. But as long as you guys are interested, uh, you know, I'll keep rolling with it. I'll keep rolling with it. 
But again, I'm late to the party too. So if you guys already watched like tons of other videos out there and you, you already played your own game a ton, like you don't don't need to watch. No offense. No offense. I'm all good. But uh, that's where we're at with too many bones. So we'll, we'll play this one today. We'll try it out. We'll check out Undertow, play one of the tyrants, just do a standalone adventure. We're not playing the campaign yet. If we do play the campaign on the channel, which I, I want to, um, I don't know if we'll do that, like two player, three player or something maybe in the future. We'll see, we'll see. Maybe I'll do it solo. Um, but I would, do want to dabble with each gear lock and try them out. I would like to try each tyrant too um, from the new content. So, but yeah. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. Oh, let me close that super important poll, uh, which I was asking, which tyrant do you like better, rock or roll? And let's see what the results are. This is super important information we need to know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Rock wins the poll with 68%. Uh, but truthfully, Roll is cooler. Uh, just FYI. Roll, roll is the cooler one um, from, from my single playthrough against them. Uh, let's see here. Robert, may I ask an off-topic question? Yeah, go ahead. I might not answer it, but you can ask it all, all day. <laughs> uh, Mike D says, everything unbreakable plus the new burn cycle stuff is on a delivery truck and should arrive today. Oh, people are still getting this stuff too, right? Yeah, you guys are getting... I, what I learned through this campaign, and, and I should have known this from the past, is the more stuff you order on a crowdfunding campaign, the way logistics works uh, and, and delivery package assembly, all this stuff works, uh, the more money you spend on a crowdfunding campaign, the more likely you're going to be last to receive it. And I've learned this in the past. I, I should have known better. Um, and usually that's why I just do base gameplay pledges or minimal, just get the base game and that kind of stuff so that I'm in the first group of people who get it shipped so that I can just play the damn game and don't have to wait. Because um, I don't need all the expansion stuff really. But with too many bones, it's like I wanted, the gameplay pledge was still a bajillion dollars. And then I was silly and started adding on dice towers and play mats and stuff, which I wanted. And I'm glad I got, but I, I wish it didn't take so long. But yeah. Uh, not interested in Isofarian Guard. Man, people keep asking about that game. Yeah, I checked it out at Gen Con in person. Not, not impressed. I don't know. Something about that game just put a bad taste in my mouth during the development and the delays and the, you know, the reopening the pledge manager over and over again and the trying to reprint it. And it just looks too long. And I don't know. Just, I get the bad vibe. It's like it's stretched out for no reason. It's like, whoa, it's one of those, it's like one of those games that says like, Look, we have a bajillion hours of gameplay, you know, like a JRPG on Super Nintendo. But then most of them, it's like quality is not in there. It's quality, uh, quantity they went for. So it's like very repetitive, grindy, like shallow just to make it seem longer than it is, you know, um, which like some bad RPGs would do in the past. They just fill themselves with fluff to make them say on the box, so many hours of gameplay. But then it's like you play it for 10 hours and you're like, why am I playing this? This is boring AF. Um, so it might be good. It's just, it, I think it should have came out maybe three years ago, four years ago, maybe when that mattered. But now we're in the day and age where there's so many big campaign games, uh, and games that can just take so long to play that, uh, yeah, I don't want to play it. I'd rather play something with a shorter campaign with more quality and more, less content maybe. But yeah, that's just the impression I get. So I'm not touching that thing with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, no, thanks. No, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Kanji, Kanji loves it. Kanji's probably playing it on his channel. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not interested at all. No thanks. No thanks. Yeah, I was gonna wait till it released uh, when I saw it on crowdfunding and see how it was. But yeah, no, not really interested at all. But if you guys love it, have fun with it by all means. But I, I guarantee there'll be channels out there playing through it, right? All the way through it, right? I'm sure. I'm sure lots of channels will take the time to actually play more than 10 minutes of a game. So you can watch those channels. I uh, just kickstart more terraforming Mars. Have they said no more expansions? They have another Kickstarter. Here we go. Let's all talk about other crowdfunding campaigns. <laughs> no thanks. No thanks. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would never buy a game based on its foreteller quality of narration. Never. Never ever. That is not a, a selling point for me. It's, it's a nice thing. It's like icing on the cake, right? But if the cake sucks, it's like, I, I don't care how good the icing is. Well, I guess not, because maybe I'll just lick all the icing off and throw the cake away. So but then, then it's just icing and then I might want ice cream with the cake. Maybe the ice cream will make it better and then 
Maybe it'll be good cake. I, I, don't, I don't. Anyways, all right. Back to too many bones. Robert, don't ever bring that game up again. Nobody bring that game up again. I don't want to talk about it. We've talked about it so many times in the past. I feel like a broken record. But yeah. Anyways. <laughs> okay, let's play too many bones. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's get back on track. Back to the task at hand. <laughs> All right, too many bones today is the game we're playing. Too many bones. The game that's been most requested on the channel ever since I played it the first time. This game, uh, yeah, it's uh, the fan base is pretty rabid, uh, has its hardcore fans, so, but not enough people know about this game still, which is sad, but it is big, it's daunting, it's complex, it's not cheap, it's premium. It's that kind of thing. Premium in many ways, not just components, by the way. But here it is. This is a top 37. 37th top ranked game overall. We're not playing this base set, though. We're playing a standalone expansion of it. Uh, just to keep that clear. But there's the base game of it. People love it. It's ranked 37, 11 in thematic, 20 in strategy. Uh, so this is a beast. It's a well-loved game. Uh, there you go. There you go. Uh, but we're playing with Unbreakable today. So this is their latest standalone product. This product is meant to be a cheaper entry into the series. Is how they kind of sell this and undertow. Uh, I probably could. Yeah, maybe we can go here. Here, let's. Uh, this will make more sense. I have links down below. Uh, whoops! I'm just slapping the keys, slapping the keys. Um, but I have links down below to the, where, where you can get this game. Again, I, I don't get any cut of it or anything, but it's a game that's not sold in many retail stores. It's sold in more than it used to be. Um, but it's, uh, most people order it either through crowdfunding campaigns at conventions or from the publisher directly. So I've linked that down below. I've also linked the support documents. So if you guys want to read through the gear lock reference sheet, the gear lock reference guide, the baddie skills and all that stuff, the rule book, whatever. I've linked that down below in the video description. So while you're watching, if you want to, you know, be looking over uh, the gear lock sheet to help uh, find out what skills we might want to unlock as we play, uh, feel free to do that as we play along. We'll look at the sheet as we play, but if you want to like, you know, get ahead of the game or understand what's going on or look up a baddie skill you think I might be playing wrong, um, I've linked those PDFs or all that are in the support link down below or the files link or whatever. Um, but here's Too Many Bones, a base game. And supposedly like 150 US dollars, or at the time, I think it was like 120 when I first got into the game. Um, that was like too much for people. That's, that's a funny thing. That's a funny thing. Nowadays, we're in the Kickstarter, you know, how much can we jam in a box and how, how many, much can we upsell people? Um, and, you know, how much can we ship to them? How big can the box be that shows up on your front doorstep? And it ends up being like $500 all-in games are all over the place. $200 for a, a base game plus a stretch goal box and stuff like that. Um, but somehow Chip Theory was like, man, $150 or $220, whatever. is like people are avoiding our game. Which is crazy that you can buy a base game of Zombicide for like, I feel like not much cheaper than this. And that is Zombicide. You know? Um, but they want to make a cheaper way for people to get into the series. So they went with Undertow, which is kind of like, it's all new content, basically. Yeah, I think it is like almost complete new content. Uh, and it's a standalone expansion. So you can buy just Undertow and plays two players. The base game plays one to four players. Undertow plays just one to two players and includes a small tasting of baddies and a handful of tyrants. Even a mini campaign mode uh, adds... Uh, you know, a small deck of loot, and that loot can be added to the other game or beefed up with other expansions. Um, but both those games were the only two ways you kind of got into Too Many Bones. You either went with the cheaper one, which was based on a different part of the world, there was a different battle match, you were on, like, you know, floating on a raft down the river, that kind of thing. And the other base game was more, a little more straightforward, a little better for the new player. Um, but again, if cost was an issue, if you want to save 50 bucks and you were only playing solo or two player, Undertow was what they were trying to present to you is like, hey, you want to try Too Many Bones? Here's a cheaper way to try our game. And then they hope you go buy the base game. All of it mixes together, blah, blah, blah. Um, but here we are. Uh, now they have Unbreakable, which is similar, if you've ever seen Too Many Bones Undertow, 
Unbreakable is the same type of product. Again, around $100, two gear locks, you know, handful of tyrants, about the same amount of content as Undertow, jammed in a little box. Uh, quite a bit of content. So basically the content in like Undertow and Unbreakable added together is like kind of what you get in, a, in the base game with the four gear locks, more tyrants, all that stuff. Um, so think of it that way. So today we're just gonna play one tyrant or one boss. We're gonna see uh, three out of the four baddie types that come in, in this game. So in, in the base game of Too Many Bones, for example, you get like, uh, I think seven baddie types, maybe six, six or seven. Uh, but in Undertow, they only use like three of them, I think three or four, and then Unbreakable will use four. Um, so, you, you know, it's basically the baddies that aren't in Undertow are in Unbreakable, um, which is kind of neat. I like the way they did that. So you might buy Unbreakable as your first Too Many Bones game. Krusty Turtle, thank you for clicking the join button and becoming a member. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for supporting me sitting here on a Wednesday afternoon playing board games for a living. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, funding my bad habit. I mean, my job. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I appreciate it. So that's what Unbreakable is. So this is not meant to be a replacement for the core set, but it could be. If you're like, ah, I don't want to spend 150 and you're okay with a little bit more complexity, but less components, you know, and you just want to try it out, Unbreakable or Undertow, both valid choices. So far, based on my assessment of just the couple games I played of Undertow, uh, or uh, Unbreakable, I should say, a uh, couple games of Undertow, man, I played way too much Undertow. Um, but yeah, Unbreakable, I played a couple games of it, seems pretty solid, but does seem a little more complex. They add some more skills you have to understand, and they even... I don't know. They made a weird design choice uh, that I don't really like because uh, it's hard for me to recommend this as a new player product. They did uh, a weird thing of like including skills on baddies that aren't normally on those baddies. So now you have even more skills to try to learn, memorize and keep looking up while you're playing. So there's more stumbling, especially as a new player and you're learning. Um, so this, this, this product is really targeted at, at, as an expansion for existing Too Many Bones fans. It, it's in there. They have to do that, right? They, they want their hardcore fan base to be happy, so they don't want to dumb it down, you know. But unfortunately, they don't. So if you're learn, if you want to learn the game, you're you're un, you know intimidated by it. I still stand by my recommendation: buy the base game or find a friend who has the game and play with them. Um, but I just want to show this here so you understand like what type of product we're dealing with and what this is. So it is a standalone expansion. All you need is too many bones unbreakable to play the game, and that's what we're playing today. Their newest core set, basically, but only supports up to two players. So hopefully that makes sense. Any questions? Any questions? Complexity rating 3.83. 60 to 180 minute playing time. The more players you add, the longer it takes. Depends on the tyrant you choose. The length of the game will be different, uh, which is really neat. <laughs> Jacko says, I don't have any too many villains. Just live vicariously through Rob in the chat. No, yeah, there's not a target version yet. No, no, this is not the target version, Cassie, no. I don't know how they would do that. Because <laughs> target has restrictions, right? Target has to be like around $50, you know. They would have to cheapen the product. You wouldn't be playing with chips, you know, weighted uh, plastic and metal chips. You'd be playing with like punch-out tokens and no one wants to do that. So let, let's not go there, okay? Yeah, yeah, no target version. This is like the... Um, this is like after you went to Target and you started buying games like, uh, you know, Lost Runes Arnak or some of the like Prospero Hall, Funko games, you know, kind of games there. And you started working your way up, maybe you bought Everdell and things like that. And you're like, okay, I need something a little more meaty, a little more premium, a little more expensive, a little more spoiling yourself, maybe a little more strategic depth. Uh, then this is where you work up to, but you're not going to find this in a Target, at least not yet. Maybe they could do a solo box. That literally has like three tyrants in it, maybe, and like two baddie types, or one. I don't even know. Yeah, I don't even know how they would do that. They could do a single gear lock, one baddie type, one tyrant, and like a bunch of encounter cards. But again, I don't know what the, um, yeah, I don't know what the cost on that would be. Like, you'd have like five loot cards, like, I, I, maybe even three. I don't even know what you'd do there, how you would cut that down. Yeah, I don't know. Because you need less dice and things. I'm not sure. I wonder if they've ever tried to do that as a solo-only entry-level box. And I brought this up before on streams, but that maybe is the way you get it down to like a $50 product. 
But again, I, like the target audience at uh, the the target audience at a target, you're looking for like families, right? So you don't want to say just one player on the box. I, I don't feel like that's what they're looking for. I feel like you need to support up to at least three players. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 20 strong would be that game yeah the 20 strong too many bones would be the like gateway that's the real gateway drug here you want to try this for 20 bucks come come take a hit on this i mean a playthrough of this yeah yeah <laughs> oh man yeah maybe the 20 strong version yeah maybe that's it that's the answer there you go that's the answer yes that's it if you want you know what we're talking about 20 strong too many bones check it out playlist down below uh, we played through it on the channel. Maybe that's your way to try it. It has the Too Many Bones feel to it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Still has the Too Many Bones feel. I'll give it that. It is premium components. I'll give it that also. But it is not the monster that is Too Many Bones. That is for sure. All right. Is everyone showing up yet? Also, thanks all 37 of you who clicked the like button. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for that. Welcome. Welcome. If you're new to the stream, uh, I apologize for everything that you dislike. In advance, cover all my bases. I apologize for the chat, my attitude, all these things. I apologize. All right. <laughs> I'm Canadian. I gotta say it. Sorry, eh? Sorry, eh? What are you talking about? All right. So here it is. Got some fresh new play mats. We're playing with neoprene on neoprene on neoprene. Technically, under this mat on my table, I have another neoprene mat. So I have like neoprene upon fabric upon neoprene upon neoprene. And technically, there's PVC plastic on neoprene, on neoprene, on fabric, on neoprene, on wood. That makes sense. So I've elevated my Too Many Bones game to have more neoprene in it. Um, so there you go. So uh, on the table, these are official mats from Chip3 Games. They were in the last crowdfunding campaign, FYI. I bought them. They look nice. They keep the game more organized. But it does spread things out, so I'm a little more zoomed out. But we'll try to zoom in. You know, and check things out closely as we need. Um, so just yell at me if you need to know what's going on. Uh, this tray uh, was sent to me by E Raptor. It's funny. I looked at it this morning and I went, "Oh yeah, it's like got the lava theme, which is the theme of the new Too Many Bones battle mat and, and the world they're in. It's got like this, you know, this lava, this lava theming to it. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna use this just because the theme fits, right? Uh, I probably should use." different colored mat uh dice tray maybe to match I, I don't know like i got accessorized guys um so yeah there's a link down below if you're curious about these card trays uh, i don't get any kickback or anything but i know someone will ask in the comments so i'm just going to get out of the way now there's a link down below if you want to look at these like custom card trays um from e raptor but uh i'm glad to have an excuse to get it out again uh which fits the theming which i think is and it's not planned it's like i've had this for years um, which is cool. <laughs> uh, other than that, everything, uh, this, this little holder comes with the trove chest stuff. Uh, so if you have the premium storage solution for the game, that's what this holder's from. So you won't find this in the, in the unbreakable box or these play mats or this card tray or this dice tray or these premium health chips. These are official too many bones, premium health chips, uh, that were sent to us by a viewer back in the day. Thank you again. Um, was it Dustin that sent me this? I can't remember. Maybe not. I'm sorry, I forget. I'm so sorry, I forget. But it's been a long time. And I'm old, and I forget things. Where are my pills? Uh, okay. Other than that, I think everything is from inside uh, Unbreakable. Including this little, I like this little tracker chip thingy they have. Uh, so instead of a little glass bead that I never would use, uh, we now have a proper visible little meeple thing we can move around on this little... Matt. Oh yeah, this mat doesn't come in the game either. This is a add-on premium little adventure mat, which now they're also using those like thick Hoplomachus style chips uh, on here, which I freaking love this too. Um, and so you can just grab the chip and turn it because it now sticks out of the mat. Oh, I love it. I love it. I like these little solutions they've come up with. I like it. Uh, oh, the gear lock riffle, uh, which is not a hidden gear lock. Um, not anymore. It was hidden for like a month and I missed out on it, but, uh, I, I ordered it the first time it was, uh, available. I've had it for like a year. 
Uh, so again, if you guys are interested and enjoy the content, enough people watch it, like it, and all that stuff, yeah, we'll eventually play Riffle on the channel too. So uh, stay tuned for that. But again, I'm not going to play him if like nobody's watching the content. I'll, I'll just play some other games because we have other games to get to too. So no worries, no worries. Yeah, yeah. The beauty of being funded by the audience is I play whatever you guys are interested in or whatever I'm interested in, which is cool. I don't have to play, you know, the new hotness all the time, which I like. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for keeping me sane. Uh, yeah. All right. So thanks for supporting the channel. Jacko says, troll alert. Where's that dice tower? Uh, what dice tower? Oh, oh, this dice tower? Well, our, our YouTube members will know uh, the story on this dice tower uh, in the a member only unboxing we did of the game. And I'll just leave it at that. And we'll just put this over here. Um, but I do have a support ticket into Chip Theory, just waiting on a response. Uh, but I did submit a ticket the other day, so I'll, I'll keep you guys updated. Maybe we won't be playing with this, uh, you know, uh, cheap uh, dice tray ordered off like Amazon or eBay or something uh, in a future stream. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> Matthew, yes, we pre-ordered that game. It, it should arrive at some point. I don't know when it's coming out in Canada, though. Uh, but it is pre-ordered from our local game store. So in the future, you'll know when we have that game. You will know. And you mean the expansion, I assume. Not, it's not a new game. It's an expansion for the existing game. I assume, Matthew, is what you mean. Unless there's another Descent game I don't know about. But yeah, we did pre-order the new Descent expansion for the latest, I believe, Descent game. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, all right. Um, yeah. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Behind the scenes, the members only content. Yeah, yeah. Members only rants. All right. Okay. So uh, what we have going on here? We picked our tyrant already, which is the first thing you normally do in a too many bones. We're playing with rock and roll. Since childhood, troll siblings, rock and roll, shared a passion for banging heads in the pursuit of power. The death of troll ruler Nom, who was a tyrant from the first game offered a vacuum atop the troll hierarchy, and Rock and Roll teamed up, using their brawling prowess to take control of the underworld tribes. As the siblings' reign has continued, however, their jealousy has reared its ugly head. An ugliness only rivaled by the heads on the trolls' own bodies. Alright. So, game length. It's one out of six. So this is gonna be a short one today, so only like seven hours instead of ten. Um, as usual, when we stream it on the channel, because we like to take our time and have fun with it. Uh, we're gonna be playing with uh, troll type baddies, break type baddies, and orc type baddies. Okay, the slow, hard hitting, big health ones, basically, is what I think we're playing with here. Uh, so we're gonna need five progress points to even attempt to fight these dummies, and we have to defeat them before day seven runs out, okay? And now we're gonna analyze the rest of the card uh, as we normally would do, and then pick a gear lock. But again, I picked the gear lock first. I probably would play a different gear lock maybe, but I think this gear lock's okay. But someone will tell me later that I was dumb for trying this. Hopefully we can make it to the Tyrant at least, and hopefully we can win. I'm going to play on the like medium difficulty mode or whatever, so uh, we'll see, but uh, I don't know if this is a good pairing. But normally you pick your Tyrant, you analyze your Tyrant's card, then you go pull the gear locks out that you think, or gear lock, that you think would uh, handle it, and then, because some gear locks just can't, uh, and then some only have specific skills that maybe can and that kind of stuff. So part of the gameplay is figuring out what you're going to bring to the battle, you know? Uh, and then when you're in the battle, which uh, training points, uh, which skills, I should say, you're going to unlock with which training points as you go along uh, based on the baddie types and the tyrant and stuff. So uh, this card's called We Will Rock You. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, we're going to be playing with Shaky Ground, which is a new mechanic, which basically, uh, here, here, ready? And I'm blow, blow your mind, guys. Okay, ready to ready have your mind blown? Okay, you've seen too many bones before, right? You're playing on a neoprene battle mat, okay? And we've seen, you know, the raft, you know, you're on the raft and things are breaking. Well, they took it even one further. Uh, so the mat is actually made up of chips and neoprene, okay? 
Uh, so the, these are rock chips. And yes, when you set up the game, you literally have to put a chip in every single slot. Uh, and, and they can turn to lava through different ways. So, uh, and these, the, you know, the floor will become lava, literally, and it'll burn your feet. But what shaky ground is, uh, anytime your gear lock loses HP, not buff HP, just normal HP, takes a hit, uh, the ground underneath them, if it's not already lava, will turn into lava. Okay? And if you're on lava, at the end of your turn, you take one true damage. Okay? This applies to all baddies, except for break type baddies, because uh, they're a-holes, and they don't get hurt by lava, which uh, they are cheating, basically. They are cheating. That's how that works. All right. And if I said anything wrong there, please correct me. So that's, this is, again, I'm like trying to learn with the rule book and figure this out and I haven't played too many bones in a while. So hopefully I get it. Hopefully I get it. Mike, see you later. Enjoy your meetings, sucker. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I played Gale off stream. Yes, I did. But that doesn't mean I understand it, right? I played it solo off stream by myself. Got out the stuff, read it, played it. So fingers crossed I know what I'm doing. So again, this is not me here to... I have played Gale and beat 17 Tyrants, and I played on the hardest mode with Gale. This is me just trying to experience another playthrough with Gale, maybe try some different skills and dabble with Gale, uh, and just really get back into Too Many Bones. And give you guys a showcase of like what's in Unbreakable, and what's new with Unbreakable. What baddie skills are there, you know, how the battle mat works, what the Tyrants kind of focus on, um, that kind of stuff, so... Yeah, this is not a Gale showcase. I, I, it's kind of a short playthrough. This is the problem, right? So when you play a gear, uh, a tyrant, I should say, that has a short game length, you're not really going to see your gear lock get fleshed out. Also, when you're playing solo with a gear lock, there's a lot of skills that maybe aren't as good in solo that you won't even talk about or touch. So I find most gear locks can, um, you know, stretch their wings and kind of play with some fun skills and really show what they're all about uh, in multiplayer, uh, especially when you get to the three or four player count, because you can be a little more like loose and silly and try some things out. But when you play in like a harder difficulty or in solo, you kind of can't gamble that much. It's a little more tough. Also, I should probably show you, uh, while we're mentioning Gale, Uh, Gale is, uh, not recommended really on solo. Uh, she's a three out of four difficulty, which is why I say hopefully we'll get to the tyrant. And that's why we're not playing on the hardest difficulty. We're playing one level down as we usually do on stream. So I can show you more of it, but maybe later we can crank it up and play through a campaign and stuff. But we'll see. Uh, but in co-op again, Gale can do whatever, man. And she's just awesome. Okay. But in solo Gale is, is maybe a little tough, maybe a little tough. Uh, but yeah, we'll go over that stuff in a bit. So back to the Tyrant card. Uh, when we fight the battle, so this little symbol here, I believe, is to remind us we should be playing on the battle mat included in Unbreakable with the lava. Okay, if you're playing on higher, higher player counts, uh, you have to do some stuff. We create the battle cure using as many trolls as possible, including Yoki Bear from chat. Uh, and then uh, we place rock on top of the battle queue. Then we place roll on top of the battle queue. Okay, before battle, the following positions on the floor become a lava. Okay, all baddies, including rock. Okay, get this. This took me like, I had to read this like five times. I was like, what the hell is going on here? So, I, I bet again, it makes sense when you read the story. Um, but all baddies, including rock, consider roll to be an opposing unit. And roll considers rock to be an opposing unit. Okay, but you see that? So... All the baddies on, on the, the mat are basically working with rock, is how I understand it, and they're against roll. And roll is just against rock, but not the baddies. So how I'm understanding this is roll, if, if you know, they're the closest units, if rock is closer to roll than we are, or it's stronger or whatever, whatever, if it's the primary target, rock, one of the tyrants, is going to be fighting, I mean roll, is going to be going after the other main tyrant. Instead of us, in most cases, if we play our, our cards right, or our chips right, I guess. Um, but all the baddies on the mat, they might be going after roll or us, depending on who's closer. And then if we're tied, whatever their targeting priorities are. And then it says baddies and party members oppose each other as normal. So that's how I get it, is roll is kind of on his or her own against rock. 
but will also fight uh, all baddies consider. Yeah, so it's like all baddies on the map could go after Roll, is how I understand it. And Roll is going after Rock or us. And the baddies could be going after Roll or us. Like the, 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 the henchmen. Uh, yeah. It's super confusing. And this is, again, this is how I plead. Uh, this is evidence towards my case that this box is not targeted at uh, a new Too Many Bones player. Because there's things like this in here that are fun for existing fans of the series, but it, it gets messy, right? It's just not as straightforward um, as, you know, some of the base game tyrants. And this is the, this is the tyrant that people recommend you to start with, uh, which is kind of crazy. All baddies must be defeated. So obviously George A had a hand in uh, this expansion uh, because George A always comes in our chats so when we're playing Too Many Bones in the past and basically says, you know, real gear locks clear the queue, right? So normally when you defeat the tyrant, you win. No matter how many other bad guys are still left on the mat, you walk away in success, right? But here on the channel, you know, sometimes we crush the tyrant in a one-shot kill or something, you know, and uh, we dummy it. Then we got all these baddies on the mat that were just staring at us. Normally they would run away and cower and you win, right? But um, there's this like house rule of like clear the whole mat, clear all the bad guys, clear the whole queue, clear everyone off the mat, on the mat, everything, you know? Be the last gear lock or gear lock standing. Um, but they actually put that on this tyrant. So all baddies must be defeated for encounter success. But it's also part of the whole thing of like, if rock and roll are fighting each other, you can't just let one defeat the other. You still have to clear the tyrant and the baddies. You can't just let like roll defeat all the baddies and then let roll and you walk away and go have a drink. You know, you still need to get rid of roll, right? Or whatever, you know, however it works its way out, right? So it's kind of cool that they put that in there to like make the puzzle a little more challenging. It's not that complicated, just another language to learn. Yeah, learning another language is so simple. <laughs> All right, there's a second tyrant. Yeah, like we have our tyrant cards, uh, you know, that they're this big. It tells you like this is not a new player friendly, you know, tyrant. Um, but once you know what's going on, it's not that bad. But yeah, it's just a lot. All right. I don't know which side. I think I go this side, right? So here's Rock's Tyrant skills. He's got Hard Rock. At the start of Rock's turn, his position becomes Rock. Okay. But then if he moves off that, you know, he could still end up on a Lava spot. But if he's staying still, he's not going to get hurt by Lava at the end of his turn because if he's staying still, he'll turn his spot to Rock. Okay. He's got Recover 2. He also heals up 2 to full health or whatever is his max. Start of his turn. His Tyrant die is Blast Heat, and still the, still the start of Rock's next turn, Lava deals plus one true damage. Place this die on Rock as a reminder, or he could have Face Melter. Every position that is currently occupied by Roll, or a Gear Lock becomes Lava, okay? And then Roll has Crowd Surf. For Roll's movement, she moves as many positions as possible, taking the shortest route possible to an available Rock position adjacent to the strongest opposing unit. Roll can move through other units and each unit she moves through is dealt one damage if there's no available rock position adjacent to the strongest opponent's unit roll does not move that's it super simple then it has star power roll can only so rolls obviously rolling around the mat is how i envision it uh trampling over people take the shortest distance so it could roll over you in too many bones part of the fun is manipulating within the rules making the dumb baddies and tyrants do kind of what you want and manipulating what they're doing to your advantage um but Roll will go the shortest path possible and crush people and try to get to the strongest unit, which hopefully is Rock, and they start fighting. And as star power, Roll can only lose HP, get this, Roll can only lose HP from lava damage, fatigue, so getting it to go to round five or long, or round six or longer, and damage dealt by troll baddies, okay? Okay, remember the baddies and Rock oppose Roll. So I can't just wipe all the baddies and wipe Rock off the mat, because then I'm going to be sitting there with Roll coming at me, and i got to wait it out while Roll slowly gets chiseled down by, like, lava and fatigue. So you see the problem here. Now, Roll has a die with a, a sweet merch side. Each gear lock draws one loot. As Ticketmaster, not sponsored, uh, each gear lock must discard one loot. And it has bad to the bone. Until the start of Roll's next turn, gear lock's backup plans cost an additional bone, Place this die and roll as a reminder, okay? So this is what we're working towards, okay? So you, when you play Too Many Bones, for those who've never seen Too Many Bones before, I know every time I play, I gotta remember there's new people who've never played before. Um, 
And just like we didn't burn cycle, just like you kind of do cloud spire a little bit, you got your pre preparation, right? So now we're automatically after seeing this tyrant and seeing what's going to happen in the final battle and seeing the baddie types we're going to be playing with, you instantly have to start thinking about how you're going to level yourself up, choices you're going to make as you go along, and maybe even which, which gear lock we're going to play with. Again, we just picked Gale. We want to just try one of the gear locks in the box. We would hope be able to win, uh, which she can. Um, but we got to be careful with our skills knowing this. You can't just, if you want to win in Too Many Bones, you have to, like they tell you, this is the first step is what we just did. Analyze the card, understand what's coming, and prepare for it. It's like we've sat there, we've came up with our plan. We are assassins. We are going to kill this evil villain who's like causing trouble in the land. And we're going to help all the innocent gear locks, you know, and make everything better. So we've hired Gale to literally take a hit out on rock and roll. And we're going to assassinate them. So Gale's not just going to run in blindly. Gale's going to try to take the best route possible. Try to learn on her adventure. And eventually get there and know what she's getting into. And, you know, there'll be some unknown information along the way that we'll have to adapt to, of course. It's a dice rolling game, guys, with decks of cards. So not everything is known information. Not every, There's a bunch of random stuff. But we're going to try our best to make it through, level up, and focus our skills on skills and stats that will be helpful to defeat rock and roll. That's what we're doing today, okay? That's what we're doing today. All right, so we're gonna shuffle up some decks. So we got the loot deck here. Okay, this is just regular loot. Regular old craptastic loot. Some is good, some is bad, some is better than others. Some maybe is broken, some's not. And then we have uh, trove loot, which is locked. And maybe we'll get some trove loot in the game. Maybe we'll see how the lock picking stuff works. If not, you can see it in another playthrough or probably just how to play videos and stuff out there. Um, tutorial videos on the lock picking mechanic of the game. But it is a fun mechanic in the game, a fun little side mini game, kind of like dangerous starts and stuff in the game that just adds to the depth and variability of the game. But you don't always see it in every playthrough, especially in a shorter solo one. All right, we're going to set up our encounter deck. Uh, and the encounter deck in Unbreakable has a day one and a day two, similar to Undertow. And the base game has day one, day two, and day three. Okay, and they've made it, you know, to cut back on components. But the cool part is, it's not just a single day one, day two, and day three. Uh, it is multiple day ones, multiple day twos. So every time we play, we're going to have a different day one experience to help get us started, a different day two, and then we're going to be adventuring into the regular encounters. And because we're playing solo, we are drawing from the solo encounters, not the regular encounters. So when you play this game two, three, or four gear locks, uh, you'll be having a whole different encounter deck that you'll be drawing from every time you play. Wait, can you even turn roll space into lava since you can't deal damage to her? Uh, well, the rock can turn it to lava with one of it, his die faces. I can't turn her space to lava. I think rolls a sheep. I'm not sure, actually. I'm going to keep mixing that up, and I'm so sorry. Maybe. I, I don't know. Anyways, whatever. Um, but, uh, rock is, could turn her space into lava. I don't have a way to turn her space into lava, maybe through loot. I don't think I have abilities that do it. Um, but remember the shaky ground is only when a gear lock loses HP, the space underneath turns to lava. It's not when I deal damage to any enemy, but there are enemies that have skills that turn the floor to lava also, and she might move on to a lava space. Um, so as we progress, uh, I'm sure the map will start completely turning into lava, and there are spots in the final battle that start as lava. But I, by default, and I don't see there's many ways to do it, I, I don't usually have ways to turn the ground into lava. It's all enemies, battle rules, uh, you know, encounter rules that are doing it, um, or tyrant dice or whatever. Will there be a quiz at the end? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no quizzes. Carthrick says, hey, Robin chat members, catching you live after two to three years. Too many bones, my favorite game. And this is what I talk about. This is the funny thing. I'm seeing names in here that I haven't seen in years or months. And welcome back. But it is funny, and I say this all the time, is there's I see different people that I think are gone. Um, but depending on the games we play, the different lifestyle games or complex games that they will show up for, it's fun. 
Um, so that's why I like playing different games on the channel, not just focusing on a single game, because then I don't see certain people. And uh, it's fun to see some of you guys come back, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the support when I'm playing your favorite game. But yeah, for example, it was mentioned earlier, like Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Uh, there's people that I only see when I play that game, or Marvel Champions, or any of the LCGs, or an Arkham Horror game, or whatever, you know? Different people will show up. Or a Hexplore It game. But I appreciate you guys that show up for whatever game. Uh, you guys are the real MVPs. Thank you for keeping the channel going while we don't play too many bones for years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, we are choosing encounters. Uh, the max encounters for the Tyrant is seven. So because we have a day one and two encounters in this game, we're going to subtract two from this. So we need five regular solo encounters, okay? And again, there could be many others you play with. They're going to be shuffled, so they could show up in different orders. This is part of the variability. Even though you're playing the same Tyrant, same gear lock, you may be running into different encounters in different orders every time you play, which is fun. Okay, I'll throw those off to the side. We are going to also shuffle two specific Tyrant encounters from Rock and Roll into these encounters, okay? They're going to be shuffled in, okay? And I'll do a better shuffle in a sec, not looking at the deck, okay? And then we're going to pick a random day one and a random day two. And I'm going to use just the D8 because I think there are eight of them. Yes. So I'll just shuffle it and then I'll pick, based on a die, uh, number, card number three is our day two. And number four is our day one, okay? Let's make it different. All right. So now there's this little cover card for it too. So you can kind of cover it up if you start knowing the names and what's on the back. I have no clue. I don't remember them ever. Uh, but yeah, I'll just shuffle this under the table without looking. Yeah, shaky ground is only in effect sometimes on a battle minion. Um, and it only affects when a gear lock loses HP. I'm 90% sure. Okay, hold on. I got to... Shuffle. I gotta finish what I'm doing. I'll get I'll get off track here. Okay. So one and two going on top. And then we'll put our cover card on top. And then we'll put them all right here. All right. And then we'll leave the tyrant card here because in case you need to reference it. We got our two tyrant chips already here with their skills on them. There's their stats. So they hit for two, defend for one or two. Um, you know, there's rock, there's roll. Both have eight health. One goes at four initiative, one goes at three. Both are troll type baddies. And both will target the single strongest unit if there's a tie. They go for the closest first, but they're both melee also. So there's a few things I forgot to mention. Okay, I'm going to put them here. And we're going to use a little battle mat here. Uh, and this will track our progress points we earn. So we start down here, and as we progress along, one point, two point, three point, four point, five points on the red dot, we then know we have enough points, and we're gonna track our days with this little dial here. Okay, and then here's their two tyrant dice that we have here, just a reminder for the tyrant fight. Hopefully we make it there. Again, we might not. You guys are gonna help me as we go along, right? And we're gonna try to survive and make it to the tyrant fight and see what we can do. See what we can do. All right, so Gale, uh, anything else I need to shuffle or anything? I don't think so, right? So Gale is the gear lock. Gear locks are like the unique little hobbit slash elf slash characters that are in this unique little world. Uh, Gale is like, I believe, like half robot, uses wind powers, uh, has a cool staff. Um, I don't remember. I read it on here the other day. Hold on. Uh, Gale was born in the break. Gale was raised by Mirwat after the harsh conditions of her surroundings left her orphaned. Gravely injured in an attack on Mirwat's compound. And again, if you played all the other Too Many Moments stuff, you might know who these people are. Uh, Gale's life was saved by wind-based cybernetic augments cooked up by her mentor. So she's basically Robocop. Uh, so we are playing with Robocop today against Rock and Roll. All right. That's, uh, that's what we're doing. Okay. Um, and she starts with four health, can roll up to two attack dice, one defense dice, three dexterity, so she can move up to three spaces and or roll three dice, uh, on her turn. 
But we're going to play on, what is it called, Heroic Adventure or whatever. Uh, so we're going to take a free HP bump to start the adventure. Uh, and she's going to get an extra health. Okay, so she's at 5 HPs. And over here we have the active slots where we can store things temporarily for the battle. Lock slots where we can store things. She only has one lock slot, which uh, is not impressed. Not impressed at all. But I understand for balance why it's there. Uh, so she has one lock slot. Things got to get locked in here. Stay there for the adventure until they, until they pop out. Uh, we have the backup plan here, which we can discuss in a minute. And then we have some skills. Uh, but the coolest thing, she also has scar tokens, like the ones from the campaign mode of the game. A uh, little clear star to scar tokens here, blocking some spots that we are not allowed to get the dice for until we unlock these using her backup plan level 3 here, um, which is cool. So let's quickly, as quick as we can, look at Gale. We'll make some decisions later. We do need to spend a training point right now. We have one training point we can spend on something, and we can discuss that in a minute. But before that, I just want to quickly look at her backup plan here. So her first bone, you can spend the first bone of the backup plan. So I, for those who never played too many bones, I do recommend going watching a how to play video so it all makes sense what we're doing here. But uh, basically the hook of the game is if you hate a game with dice luck and dice in general, this game has tons of dice. If you hate games where you're rolling dice and things feel out of your control and you're just basically playing based on dice luck, this game has a lot of dice luck. But the cool part is the misses on the dice can be saved up in your backup plan to build up to big wicked effects that you can fire off uh, at your leisure uh, to help you win the game. So it's kind of like in the fighting games that have like a charge up meter. So as you're getting hit, it's building up a charge meter that can then you can unleash some super attack or super combo or something like that. Think of it like that, right? It's kind of like a balancing mechanic, a catch up mechanic, um, which is really cool. And sometimes you're even trying to miss. You want the backup plan. You're like actively hoping your dice don't roll the successes, quote unquote. Bob, thank you for being a member for 11 months. Welcome back. Late in using my free membership Super Chat this month. Am I likely to encounter any complicated math or accountancy from Rob during the stream? No, I don't think so. Oh, we do have to add up the days times the number of gear locks multiple times. And since I'm playing one gear lock, multiplying one by the number of days could get very complicated. So I might need your help, Bob, later for that. Like when we're on day eight and I have to add like eight times one together, we'll look it up if we need to because I don't know the answer right now, but we'll figure it out as we go. Just fix my eyebrows. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Mark, you're missing the adventure mat in your shipment. Oh, man. I hope I'm not missing anything. We double checked on our, our unboxing stream, but. <laughs> yes, Kanji, dice. Yes, plenty of dice. Lots of dice. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, the first backup plan ability. So, with one die, you can pull the die out, roll it. If it doesn't roll bones, so remember in your backup plan, it could be any kind of dice. It could be skill dice, attack dice, defense dice. Different dice have different amount of bones on them, and they all could go in your backup plan. So the first one in your backup plan matters. You're going to pull it out. You're going to roll it. If it doesn't roll a bone, you get to heal one. If it does roll a bone, you shift all your dice to the left and put it in the last spot. So then a new die is now in the first spot. You can only use your backup plan once per round. So then it brings you back around to maybe later you have a different die in there. So like I'm actively deciding and you can when in a, in a roll phase, you can roll a whole bunch of dice. And if you get like eight bones, you choose which order those bones go in your backup plan. So it matters with Gale, which I do like. It's like a little game within the game. Uh, very clever. All right. Uh, two is vent canister just deals one true damage to an adjacent baddie, which I'm all about. Always nice to have for baddies that don't let you attack them normally or break your attack dice or whatever. Uh, having access to true damage in a, in a cheap way is great for solo. Great in general um, to handle a lot of weird baddie, baddie shenanigans. Uh, and because it's deal damage, it's not like a targeted attack, which is nice. Um, three bones you can spend. That's how you unlock those slots to be able to buy some major skills, which we'll look at shortly. Uh, wind power to change one skill die rolled. It's not an attack, not in defense. A skill die rolled to a result of your choice before using it. 
And then five is acti activate turbine. Immediately roll attack dice equal to your attack stat against an adjacent baddie. So right there, it screams to me like you want her attack stat to be high if you plan on activating turbine. Okay. So keep that in mind when you're like, Rob, you don't need more attack. And I'm like, no, no, just one more, guys. Just one more. This is maybe what I'm thinking is because that could be like a one shot boss potential on it, right? When I see stuff like that, that's like, you know, one shot, 20 point baddie kind of shenanigans if you set it up right. Okay. Uh, and then you can upgrade to the 8 plus 1, obviously, when you get to 6. So her innate... She has auto mechanic. Gale has a major skill dice, which have their own effects and also enhance other skills in the same profession. Gale can only train major skill dice if they've been prepped using her mechanic protocol backup plan, which we already discussed. Okay. But her innate plus one is auto restorer. When Gale rolls her major skill dice, she, instead of putting them in your active slot, and I'll, I'll explain what they do, but they basically buff up a skill line or a skill tree or whatever, uh, or a profession. They're called professions, I believe. Um, you can, instead of putting them in an active slot so it's just that for the whole battle, you can put one in her lock slot and have it for the whole adventure, uh, which normally you couldn't do. So that's what you might want to do. And then when you, you find the perfect result and you're like, man, rolling the dice to find that perfect one in six uh, die face I want to lock with my, my innate plus one. Well, again, if we go to the backup plan, if you can get four bones and line up that you're changing that uh, major skill die to the result of your choice, and you have the innate plus one, you can lock it in, then you have her specific power that you want turned on for the rest of the adventure, which it, obviously in a longer adventure, this would be something more achievable. I don't know if we'll get it here, but it's a cool little thing to try, a little side achievement to try to do, um, which is cool. So here we have the beginner build strat. So it's saying you should bump up your dex and attack first to gain a little more movement and lethality. After that, it depends on your role. Go for defense and HP if you're tanking or more dex if you're offering support or offense. Uh, the skills, it says work to build out one of the lines with a major skill die. Attack protocol allows you to bring the most pain, which we'll probably be focusing on in this playthrough since we're solo. And then pick up others that complement your playstyle, regardless of your build. Don't sleep on sidestep as it provides a major boost to survivability. Okay. And then here it talks about unlocking major skill dice, which I'll try to explain the best without going through all this. And enhancing skills. When in your active slot, major dice lock. Okay, yeah, I think I understand all that stuff. All right. Oh, and then she has reminders, which I'll need to reference because I forget how some of these work because I haven't seen them in a while, but uh, we can look them up on our sheet if we need. Um, but again, each gear lock has a whole bunch of skills. And you can see that here, uh, that's this little area down here on the right, and certain skills uh, are colored, and you can see those on the sheet. They're also color-coded, um, so it explains her four red dice, which are part of the movement protocol profession. Then we have defensive protocols, the purple dice here, these four dice. Then we have attack protocol, which is the blue, which is all about damage and messing with the opponent. Uh, purple is actually more messing with the opponent, I feel, and making yourself like immune to... Uh, you basically turn yourself into like a robot, so you're immune to like uh, all the things that are immune to, like poison, um, terrify, I forget what else. Where is it? Uh, bleed, stun, terrify, poison, and weaken. We could go for that. I, I'm not really going to worry about that because we're not playing against bogs, but I definitely would if we were. Um, but you can basically make yourself like, um, oh, what's the robot gear lock? Which I, oh, gasket. You can make yourself kind of like gasket, immune to that stuff, which is cool. Um, but we'll focus on the light blue stuff, which is mainly damage. Uh, and then we have life circle, which is some healing and some effects, some positive and or negative effects you can uh, add to other units on the map. And then self coder, coder basically also lets you kind of like re-roll dice in your active slots and like try to find a better result, but you could just revert them back to the previous result if you want. So that's our consumable die. Um, but we'll look into this stuff as we go. But I'm going to focus on the light blue stuff, I think, to start because there are baddies in this uh, run that we will see. It was smoke screen was one that I got thrown off by that you can't, if it's on a lava space, you can't attack it with attack dice. You have to find a way to deal damage. Again, we have a way to do that uh, with our backup plan, but I want a die that also deals damage, which could be percussive blaster, sonic squall, or I think, yeah, disorienting charge does it too. So the blue little, this is the Mega Man line, I like to call it, uh, because it's blue and also is related to the arm cannon. So she can get Mega Man's little arm cannon blaster. 
uh, which could power up those things and basically make it so normally they're against adjacent baddies. As you see here, uh, if we look at, um, let's look at Percussive Blaster here. Where'd my mouse go? So Percussive Blaster, for example, is deal number damage to an adjacent baddie, then move it up to two positions in a straight line, okay? But it's adjacent baddie only. But here's the first example of this, this major dice. So once we've trained at least one light blue die, and we've at least popped our backup plan of three dice, we can unlock and take the token out of the space on the mat, and then we could try to use a training point to get arm cannon locked in, uh, or, or sorry, yeah, get it, get it on the mat, and then we could throw it up in our active slot, which gives basically range to all of our light blue dice. And there's a similar dice for the purple that makes them all better, and there's a similar dice for the red, which makes all the red dice better. Um, so that's her like innate, how it works. So I want to change one of the light blue, and then maybe we can get unlock the arm cannon. Then we can start hitting anybody on the map. And then it gets even cooler. If you look here, on the last four faces on the arm cannon, you can not only hit a baddie anywhere on the mat, you could also maybe apply bleed or weaken or poison or... Uh, what's that one that... That's the one that ignores skills, and I forget what it's called. Disable. You could disable them too. Um, which is cool. So that's kind of what Gale's going on at a high level. Again, you can bring up the sheet. I have a link down below to the uh, support, Too Many Bones support files. Uh, you can go in there, you can open up any gear lock reference sheet, any, any of these baddie reference sheets that I'm using. Uh, if you want to read more into each of these, what they do, especially if we're playing a gear lock in the future, you're curious about like, do I want to buy that gear lock who's an expansion? Maybe I don't like how they play. You can go read all about them on their sheet before you ever dabble with it, which is nice. Um, but yeah. Yeah, it, it, exactly, Minion. We have ways of moving baddies around. Yes, so that percussive blast one does it, right? Uh, in a straight line, two spaces. So, yes. And it's up to two positions in a straight line. And we decide which direction it goes. So, yes, that is 100% away. We need to move baddies onto lava, possibly, right? Um, but again, we got to make sure the baddie stays on the lava because it only applies at the end of the turn. So, if you move a baddie onto lava and then you run away and they just run across the mat at you, and you might say, Rob, how can you run away? All movement is done before you attack. Well, one of my favorite things in gaming is to, you know, be able to choose, you know, movement before and or after an action, uh, which that's what Gale lets you do. But in a, it's very limited, very restricted, but it is related on the red dice here. So hit and run actually allows you to, after you're done resolving all your dice, so basically smashing baddies, uh, you can then move away one, two or three spaces, depending on the result. And when you roll this, you can put it in your active slot and you choose when you want to exhaust it. So Gale does have a little bit of that uh, stick and move kind of stuff going on and has a sidestep die where she can also move out of the way when a baddie moves adjacent to her. She can move out of the way one space or maybe two or three spaces, depending if her gust rockets major die has been rolled and put in her active slot. So yeah, yes, yes, she does have the movement and she's all about the air power and moving, manipulating and that kind of thing, which is which is neat. So uh, Gale on paper, I was like, yeah, man. But then I saw the solo rating, I was like, oh no. Uh, and I played with her and she's, yeah, definitely better in co-op, I would assume. But uh, we're, we're gonna try to make her work here. We're gonna try and make her work. Or with sidestep, can stand next to lava, get baddies to run at you and then move away. Yes, yes you can, 100% minion, yes. So help me when we're playing along and remind me of that. Uh, when I start doing weird things and I go, don't forget, Rob, there's lava on the board. Use it. Okay. So we need to spend one more training point. I have three decks to start. It recommended that I up my health, I think it said, and attack. Or no, it said dex and attack, I think. Yeah, dex and attack. So already uh, I'm rolling two attack dice, one defense. I could add another deck, so then I have like some movement options and still roll all my dice. But again, you gotta be careful. You can't just go with the um, attack and then you don't have a way to deal damage sometimes. Jacko, thank you for the super chat. Gotta go to work, go get him robbed. Thank you so much. Enjoy your shift. Aaron says, I'm in my pickup truck at work. 
Let me just take my bone key and open my trove chest and get out Gale's character sheet. <laughs> Aaron, nicely done. Doing it right. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So what training point? I, I kind of like Sonic Squall. I like Percussive Blaster. Uh, another sleeper for solo. I, I haven't tried it yet, but in theory, I want to. I don't know if we'll do it today, but uh, tor Tornadic Barrier. It allows me to put out a little tornado on a space on the mat, and it ticks down, so it could stay out there for multiple rounds, um, but no baddie can enter that space. So when you're playing solo and you're trying to like hide in a corner or kite baddies or run away or whatever, uh, you could prevent maybe getting surrounded by being able to put that die on the board. I feel like it could be super powerful, but I've never felt like risking it yet to spend the training point. But it's something I, in a longer run, I would definitely consider. And I might consider today. Um, this one is one I've been thinking about. But let's just get some damage going. And I like this one. Uh, I like this one, Sonic Squall. Yeah, Sonic Squall. Because it can deal damage to an adjacent baddie. Okay. Uh, and it has no misses. Now, that may be a bad idea. And you're like, man, a die with no misses, that's broken. But it's not. Because the other thing, you want to get your innate going. Or maybe I want to, uh, you know, at least get to three bones and unlock one of these slots. So maybe taking a die that doesn't have bones is a bad idea. Because I might want to get bones to unlock that stuff, especially early in the playthrough. You need to sometimes get extra bones going. Um, but then again, I also want to win and survive, uh, you know, the earlier shaky rounds sometimes. So this, like, die I kind of go for. Um, but this one could move a baddie away. But the problem with this one is I'm playing solo. So, yeah, pushing a baddie away sounds awesome. But then on their turn, they just move right back to me. Uh, it's kind of like the it's lost and uh, it doesn't hit as hard and uh, the other one has better you know better damage possibility so in solo I feel like Sonic Squall's the better one but in multiplayer uh, you know maybe Percussive Blaster might be the play that's just where I'm at but again Disorienting Charge could be pretty awesome too they all they all have a case they all have a case they all have a case right Brian, how's it going? Uh, Minion, I want to see every gear lock in super long playthroughs to see how you can level them out. And, and the best way is to play them in the campaign modes. That's the best way. That's the best way to play in like the Age of Tyranny, like full campaign where you keep dice and carry them over. That's the best way. But the beauty is um, playing with Gale in a short playthrough and then playing it with another short tyrant. Those tyrants and baddie types make you want to pick different skills, so that also helps out, or based on what you're seeing. Um, but yeah, I'm just doing it in a short playthrough to get back into the game and try a new tyrant, try a new gear lock, uh, and it works for me. So yeah, I think I'll take Sonic Squall. Okay, we're going to get some training points, I'm sure, on day one. Uh, speaking of, let's do that. That was, just, that was just our difficulty mode setup, so extra health. Extra training point. So our day one encounter is packing up. The break is the most hostile biome in Daylor. If the troglodytes don't get you, the bandits will. If the bandits don't get you, well, there's the lava, the bitter cold, the sudden sinkholes, angry molnor, jagged outcroppings, poisonous gas pockets, etc. It's pretty rough. Well, there's no way to completely ameliorate. What the hell word is that? The danger. Mirwatt's compound does include a pack of environmental survival gear. It will take up some room, but you can't put a price on a price or a size on being alive, right? So this is an encounter. We're going to face a bunch of encounters as we go, and we have choices, okay? This is a symbol for a peaceful choice and a peaceful choice. We will not have a battle today. So we could choose number one. Could get us a bonus loot. The other one could get us two bonus loot. Let's see what they give us. We could pack survival gear. Treat this card as loot. Survival gear during the recovery phase, all gear locks may take two different individual options instead of one. Three uses, use a D6 to track it. So normally in the recovery phase, after a battle, whether you win or lose, you go to the recovery phase. 
you take one individual option, which could be healing yourself up to full. It could be uh, looking for better loot by discarding loot. Uh, it could also be scouting ahead and seeing what baddies are coming up in the stacks. Oh yeah, I didn't shuffle the stack. That's the other thing I had to do. So I believe I have all the types uh, set correctly. But uh, if we see a bog type baddie show up, I maybe didn't get them all out. Uh, so try to catch me on that. But I think I got them all out. Um, but yeah, so we can scout the stack. So this just lets us do two options. So even if we lose, and normally you only heal, or you should only heal unless you have some healing loot, uh, this lets us do a little more, like scouting or looking for better loot, uh, which is nice. But, we could also fill our pack with other goodies. Any gear can be survival gear as long as you survive. So, just taking two random loot. I'll probably go for option two. Two loot cards will be good. Again, looking for better loot sometimes just doesn't do anything. Scouting sometimes, it's great. Scouting is great, but I don't know. Yeah, scouting is great. No, I'll go with option two, I think, right? Yeah. All right, they're both awesome, but I'm going to go with number two. Okay, I'll go with number two. So we get one progress point, one training point, and two loot. Okay, so one progress point. So we start down here. One progress point. Okay, one training point. Uh, you can take this in whatever order. So I'm going to take my two loot first, uh, which might change how I want to spend my training point. Well-heeled boots. <laughs> After you resolve your roll phase, oh, perfect, this is what I talk about, I love this in games, right? I love being able to attack, stick and move, you know? Uh, this is more of that. Disclaimer, use in caves, use in caves is not recommended. <laughs> okay, I like it, I like it. Oh, another thing you can do with lava on the battle mat, you can toss a loot at any point. I think it's an adjacent tile or a tile you're on, maybe it's any tile on the mat, I don't remember. Um, I haven't really done it, I just remember reading it. Um, but you could spend a loot to change a lava to a rock. I'll look it up though. I'll look it up to make sure, or if someone in the chat knows. Does it have to be a, a space you're on or adjacent to? I can't remember. Um, again, this, I'm still learning this battle mat. Uh, if you have two or fewer HP, heal yourself for five. Otherwise, heal yourself for two. The suit must flow. Tout melange. Spice. Alright. So I like those two loots. A heal loot's always good to have, especially solo. Because it might be the difference between winning or losing a scenario and starting the snowball effect down the losing hole. Uh, and then we'll take our training point. I think I'm going to just take a dex. I think I'm just going to take a dex. Yeah. I'll just take a dex. It's boring, but I'm going to do it. I think I need it. But I, I wanted to go for attack, though. I also want to do defense, but I think I'll do that. All right. Day number... Oh, yeah. Recovery. We don't need to heal. We can scout or look for better loot. I like these loots, so I'm not going to look for better loot. Uh, so I will scout. We'll roll the d6. And if we get a 1 to 3, we can look at the top baddie from the 1 point stack. If we get a 4 or 5, the 5 point stack. Or a 6, we got a 5. Uh, but if we got a 6, we look at the top 20 point baddie. But we're playing solo, so that's probably not a thing. Uh, let's look at the first 5 point baddie, actually. Okay. So this is a doomed experiment. It has smoke screen, so that means you cannot attack it if it's on a space with lava. You have to use some kind of deal damage effects or whatever. It's break, so it would be immune to lava, so it could just sit there and not being damaged. And what's brimstone? And all these new keywords, some of them are like hard to remember, I find. Uh, anytime an opposing unit moves to a position adjacent to this unit, this unit immediately gains a defense to die, and if possible, moves one position in the opposite direction of the opposing unit's current position. So it's basically a big chicken. So I want to attack it from range, which is 
Probably not gonna. I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy. I think I'm gonna put him in the back. He who controls the suit controls the universe. <laughs> Thank you, Brian, for the super chat. <laughs> I feel like putting him in the back. We won't see him till like day five, probably. But I, there are some, you know, days that'll bump up the battle queue. So we could see him earlier. Five health, though. Let me double check smoke screen. Uh... Yeah, when occupying a lava position, this unit cannot be targeted, but can still be damaged by non-targeting skills and other effects. He's ranged, which is annoying also. Yeah, back you go. Back you go. All right. Okay, day two. Yeah, but what if he starts in a scenario, Yogi, where he's placed out on a, a lava chip that's already set up as lava as part of the scenario, and he just starts on lava? Yeah, and then we're stuck in melee and we have no way to hit him from a distance. I know if we get him stuck in a corner, he can't run away, which is fine, but... Oh, whoops. Uh, day two. Dazed or confused? Every time a gearlock ventures into the greater break, they are faced with a small army of enemies crowding around the ropes used to scale down from Mirwat's compound. Today, however, a new idea springs to mind. What if all the gearlocks up here just started dropping rocks on the baddies' heads? Gearlocks tend to come up with complex solutions, so maybe it's not surprising that nobody's thought of this before. But certainly, it can't be that easy, right? The first boulder falls and cracks on the head of an orc. Who falls to the ground like a sack of zelfie roots? Apparently, it's that easy. Option one. They're both battles, both battle options, based on this little sword and shield symbols over here. Uh, me likey. Me likey double training points. So the first option we could choose is days and raise. Battle queues baddie points. We're on day two times gear locks is two. So we'd have two one point baddies. Place a dazed effect die on each baddie when it enters the battle mat. And dazed is... Yeah, uh, the unit can't move on its next turn. So they don't move. Okay, that's nice. Option two, choose to confuse. Battle queue baddie points. At the start of each round, place a confuse effect die on all baddies. If they already have a Confuse Effect die on them, instead remove it. And Confuse is, this unit's attack stat and defense stat are swapped. Lasts until another Confuse Effect die would be placed on unit. Hmm. Alright, we're gonna have our first poll, everybody. Well, I guess our second poll. There was that super important one at the start. Option one, or option two. I'll put a poll in the chat, you guys decide. Uh, while you're voting, um, I'll be right back in like a second. All right, back, back, back. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> yeah, feel free to vote on the poll in the live chat. Uh, it's down there. You can click on it. If you're on mobile or, or web browser, it should work. And I'll close it up. Thank you, everyone that voted. Sometimes the poll system doesn't work on some platforms. I know that's a thing. Um, all right. 56% voted for number two, so we're going with number two. We're going to do the choose and confuse. Okay. I'll put this here. All right. So battle queue baddie points. We need two one-point baddies in our battle queue. Okay. Um, at the start of each round, place a confused effect on it. Confuse is... Oh, that one. This one. We need confused effect dice. This one. Okay. All right. Let's set her up. Uh, our first baddie is an orc miner who has rage one and raiding. I know raiding from the base game is like with the orcs. Uh, it gets attack plus one for each other orc on the battle mat. So right now it doesn't even roll an attack die, I think. And I think rage one means that once it loses 
any health beyond its maximum. So once it gets to three health or less, it will roll one attack die. I'm guessing. Let's see if I'm right. Rage. Rage number. If this unit has less than full HP, it gains number additional attack dice. Okay. So right now, it's a big weenie. And we are fine with that. But you know I'm going to draw another orc. That's my luck, right? So we're going to put it in lane one. Uh, this battle map goes lane one, three, four, and two, which is a little different. Uh, I think that's different than the base game. I don't know if that's different than Undertow, though. Uh, four health. Melee position. So we have our range and our melee here. Um, on the side, it tells us the baddie. I like the way they put this here, and like, because you can't print them, right? I guess they could print them on the chips, but then that'd be ugly. Um, but I like this little solution. I like how clean this mat looks. It's definitely better, I think. Um, but yeah. All right. Uh, and its initiative is three. The next baddie is... Whew. An orc. Orc scavenger. Damn it, he has rating also. So this guy is already going to be rolling two attack dice because of this orc being on the battle mat also. This guy is melee, three health, three initiative, and frenzy. Uh, frenzy. That is mole mesh's ability, right? Frenzy is like, uh, if it rolls a hit, all hits on its attack dice, it will roll them again and add all the hits together. Is that right? I'm guessing. Uh, frenzy number. If at least number of this unit's attack dice hit, roll a hit. Roll number of attack dice again and deal total damage to both rolls. Oh, okay. So if at least, I was wrong, kind of. Uh, so if at least one die rolls a hit, re-roll that die again and add the hits to the total hits. Hmm. So I gotta kill one of these as fast as possible. And it's this one. Because this one has defense also. So does this one. But this one doesn't roll anything if I kill this one first. For attack, I mean. For attack. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I called it. There's a lot of break type baddies in that pile. And some trolls. And I drew two orcs to start. Serenity now. Sorry about that. Hopefully that was muted. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. All right, we're back. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now we roll our initiative. Oh yeah, and there's start of round, right? They're gonna be confused. Uh, we rolled a four, so we go first. Great. Now where are we placing ourselves? I think in this. We're a melee gear lock, by the way. Uh, which is weird. I, I, I'm not sure why Gale's not melee ranged when she has a die that could make some effects ranged. So I was kind of, kind of surprised by that. that she's not melee ranged. But, uh, yeah. All right. Now, confuse die. Start a round. Round one. Confuse, confuse. Oh, I see what's going on here. I forgot about the confuse. This is actually going to change things, right? Not with this guy, really, because his attack stat, how is rating worded, actually? Uh, rating, this unit gains one extra attack die for every other orc type batting on the battle mat, but it's not changing his attack stat. And I believe Confused is switching their stats. So this guy's still a 1-1, one, one, but this guy's now doesn't roll defense, but he rolls an attack die. So he'll also roll one extra from rating. The confusing is kind of annoying, actually. That was, I think, a bad choice, but we didn't know, right? We didn't know. So, let's just kill this guy as quick as possible, right? Right? So, we're going first. And did I miss anything? I always feel like when I haven't played in a while, it's like, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, it'll swap each round, which is nice, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's a little messy. Okay, so let's start. Uh, we have four decks. We don't need to move, uh, so we don't need to use any of our points of dexterity for movement, so we'll just stay there. So we can roll up to four dice. We have two attack, we can roll one defense, and we can roll this Sonic Squall. And remember, we don't have to apply, you can roll whatever, 
Uh, but then you choose the order and if you want to even apply any of them. Unless they have a forced effect on them. Let's do it! Alright, so what does he got? Three health? Uh, so we can kill him, so I'll, I'll put this uh, defense dice in my active slot. Unfortunately, we have to spend our blue die uh, because our attack dice, none of them roll a two. Uh, so we got three damage here, which is enough to totally destroy this guy, which is great. Okay, so now this guy's raiding. Shut off. Shut off. None of this, none of this working together crap works. Uh, so yeah. And this die is exhausted. And that's me. Okay, this blue guy. He is going to move to come and get me. Uh, sure, he'll move like that. But he can't reach me. Great. Round two, the confused will go off. Oh yeah, he rolls a defense. Uh, no, he doesn't. Because his stat was switched, right? So he technically had one attack. And no defense. So no defense will be rolled. I mean, this confuses confusing me. That's really what the confused die does. Confuses me. Alright, so my turn. Uh, I definitely have to move one with my decks. I now have three decks remaining. I only have two attack dice to roll. I could re-roll this one. I don't think I care. Unless I'm trying to get bones here. I think I... He'll, he'll probably have an attack because if I damage him, he'll have an attack back on me. So maybe I just keep that there. Mm, but I do want to get bones. Yeah, I got health to lose. Sure, let's go for the bones. I want to unlock arm cannon as quick as possible. So I'm going to pull out my defense die and roll it. And of course I didn't get any bones. Damn it. But I do hit this guy for two. Actually, I can probably zoom in a bit more, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, so I got two. Uh, so he's down to two. So now his rage is activated, so he doesn't have an attack stat. He'll use that right now. And defense stat. And he gets a defense, but he rolls a bone, so he doesn't even hit me. Aha. Aha. I don't know where I'm putting all this stuff. Uh, okay. Round three. He's now confused again. Okay. Uh, I'll just do the same thing. Okay, I can't roll a bone. Um, two damage, takes off one defense, one health. Okay, now he goes. Uh, his stats are flipped. So he actually has two attack right now. Because he has rage one plus his defense, because he's confused, is now an attack, right? This is so weird. Too complicated for the first fight. <laughs> Uh, okay, he hits me twice, so defense for one, health for the other. Okay, uh, and then we're on to round four. Confused comes off, my turn. Finish him. Again, no bones, what is going on here? Uh, so I'll just hit him for one, and he gone. And I'm missing one HPs. Uh, why'd I put that guy there? I'll make my defeated piles over here, uh, which you can't see. Yeah, I'll just put my 1.5s and 20s here. Not that I'll face any 20s, hopefully. Uh, okay. And I get my skill dice back. Uh, now rewards. So I'll get a loot. Let's see what we get. Hot locks, three uses. Blueberry, shockberry, popping candy. At the start of the round, move your any, any die up one spot on the any meter. Candy innovation was still in its infancy during my time period. Figment. Hmm. Okay. Uh, one progress. And two training points. Two training points. I say we go for attack. And see what happens. We succeed at training because we got no bones. Um, or 
Probably a dexterity. Yeah. Okay. I know, I, I didn't mean to roll so good, Brian. It's so annoying. I hate rolling successes in games. So annoying. <laughs> if you really want to get your backup playing, like you're an 8 plus 1 or whatever early, uh, just crank up your defense stat and just roll tons of defense dice uh, and your decks, your decks and defense. You'll see lots of bones. You probably will die, but you'll see lots of bones. May take you 12 rounds to win the first battle, but you'll still get lots of bones. Maybe. Um, okay. Uh, training points got him. Uh, recovery. Should I just take a health? Yeah, I'll just take my health. And... No trove loot to unlock, no one to trade with. We're good. Day three? Uh, links in the video description, Francis. Links in the video description. Go down there, you'll find all the links you need. Encounter, corruption and graft. A dull gleam catches my lamplight, and I bend down to get a closer look to my shock. I recognize this jagged piece of metal hardware as belonging to Mirwat's great machine, which the tyrants of the break destroyed and divided amongst themselves. Each tyrant has grafted a piece of the machine to their bodies, giving them additional power and vitality. A thought crosses my mind. It has been a tough journey down here all by myself. Maybe I should follow this, the tyrant's lead. Apparently, I don't have long to decide. I can hear the hostile portals and snorts of my enemies echoing through these tunnel walls. It won't be long before they arrive. So I grab the mechanism and decide to think on my feet. Oh, we got some options. So two battle options. Uh, the top one gets us an extra training point and extra loot. But obviously it's going to be more challenging, I think. It says it will be easier to repair the machine if part of it's not stuck to my arm. So darkness is another new mechanic to combat, uh, to battles in this version of the game. And how that works uh, is in darkness, all the baddies, uh, they come in face down. I don't know about ones that you've scouted. I assume those are face up already. But the ones you don't know will definitely be coming face down. You're in darkness. They go to their starting spots, uh, assumed to be the range positions. Uh, initiative is rolled, I think. I'm pretty sure. And basically, they don't get revealed until you're adjacent to them or they're adjacent to you. Or you've damaged them somehow. And they have no health value, no nothing. So if you damage it, it flips and it goes to full health and now it's on the battle mat. So you kind of have no idea what you're up against and which baddie you should go beside. And you know, normally you get to start on the mat where you want kind of and pick which baddie you're beside and how you want to defeat them in what order. But in darkness, you don't know. You don't, you don't know what's going on, uh, which is pretty cool. So uh, the first one's darkness. This is battle queue baddie points. Create the battle queue using as many break baddies as possible. So we would actually get to see them. This doesn't make sense, right? Because break baddies means we need to start drawing till we find break baddies. And any ones that we look through, we shuffle back in. Then I assume we shuffle the, the stack, but that means we'll get to look at the baddies. That's so weird. Yeah, that's like kind of a weird choice. Break baddies are the worst, by the way. I hate them. Especially with the lava advantage. Um, but the other one is absolute power corrupts absolutely, but maybe it won't this time. Battle cube body points. If the encounter success is achieved, gain persistent. So this will be an ongoing effect till the end of the adventure. In each recovery phase, the gear lock may rest and recover and take one other individual option of their choice. Similar to that, that, that day one option I think we had, or day two option, or whatever it was. Uh, okay, I'll leave this up to you guys. Whatever you want to see. If you want, you want to make sure we play longer, I could argue both choices could lead to a longer, more stronger playthrough, but that first option maybe is a little risky, but I think the rewards might be worth. Um, but I'll put a poll in there. So option one is the top one. 
Option two is the bottom one. Go ahead and vote. You can choose and we'll play it. Whichever one gets chosen. Ah, I like that minion is put whatever chips out and then as they flip, we'll just go dig and find a break if it's not a break. I like that idea better too. I like that idea better too. I want to know it's darkness, right? We're, it's symbolizing us walking into a cave. We don't know what's in there, right? Um, yeah, I like your idea. I'm stealing it. But here's the risk, guys. You might see the rewards and you're like, obviously go for this option. It's got the most rewards. But how this game works is if we fail on that, we lose a day, we get no rewards, nothing, no progress, no training points, no loot. We lose a day and we then have to go heal and get to do like nothing else. And then we go to the next day, which gets worse because the math keeps increasing, which equals more baddies on the mat, uh, stronger baddies as we go. And we got nothing for this day. So you have to evaluate, is it safer to go with this option to at least like, you know, guarantee, quote unquote, uh, that we at least get a training point and a progress? Or do we gamble and maybe get nothing, you know, get all or nothing, you know, get this, 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 and this, but we put it at risk, right? If we lose it, there's a snowball effect of this game where the game difficulty keeps going up. But if you're not advancing with it, uh, yeah, things can get out of control real quick and you might not be ready for the final battle. You might even run out of days and not even get to the final battle because of risky decisions. And obviously, based on where you're at, this card showing up later in the adventure or earlier in the adventure or with a bigger party, I guess it's a solo card, so that wouldn't happen. But you know what I mean, like, or with a different gear lock, I should say. It is a different party if you have a different gear lock. Uh, you might evaluate this card differently, which I like. So sometimes you get here and you may have lost the last one and we're like, man, we don't want to go make it risky. Let's be safe. Or we need one more day and we have one day left. You, can't, you might not want to pick the top option because it's too risky, you know. Uh, but right now, I think we're feeling okay. I think we're feeling okay. We're on day three, right? So we're going to have three one-point baddies, if that helps. Uh, but let me close the poll and see what you guys chose. Of course, when you're not the one playing, uh, you know, you might <laughs> also vote a little different. But it's part of the fun. Okay, option number one, 82%. All right, so we're in darkness. And it's good. I wanted to show you guys how the darkness works. Assuming I know exactly how it works. Um, but let me just double check it. It's not that complicated. I just want to make sure I understand everything about it. 26. Page 26. Oh, yeah. I can just do it over here, actually, so you guys can read with me. Making sure I'm not crazy. Not that much. I've only had it once, actually. Um, so I'm, I also want to feel comfortable with it. Darkness. When a battle has a darkness modifier, visibility in underground is so low that it's difficult to see what the party is facing. Baddies always enter the battle mat unrevealed. Unless scouted. Unless scouted, they're placed face down. Okay, there's my answer for that. And treated as ranged baddies for the purpose of battle mat placement. Unrevealed baddies have no HP. During battle setup, roll their any die for their initiative. If entering the battle mat during the battle, handle their any as normal. So after round one, they come in normally. But just that first encounter, the first round, the first setup, um, they're face down. On their turn, unrevealed baddies move up to two positions toward the closest party member. They cannot have any dice placed on them, including status effects. Unrevealed baddies can't lose HP, as they have no HP to lose. However, party members can still target and deal damage to unrevealed baddies. An unrevealed baddie becomes revealed immediately if it's ever adjacent to a party member. And an unrevealed baddie also becomes revealed at the end of any turn in which a party member deals the damage. The party member doing so would need to be able to deal damage to a non-adjacent baddie, since if they were adjacent, the baddie would already be revealed. Unrevealed baddies are not revealed or otherwise affected and if dealt damage from any source other than a party member. So lava won't make them reveal themselves. Another baddie hitting them won't make them reveal themselves. Splash damage from other baddies or whatever. When a baddie is revealed, flip its ship, place full HP underneath it, even if through damage, even if revealed through damage. Its any is not adjusted. If it's revealed on its turn, it will finish its turn using skills and rolling dice as normal. Once a baddie is revealed, it remains so for the rest of the battle. 
So the crazy part there is you could have a super big, hard-hitting troll that normally goes slow in initiative, but it could come out, you roll its any die, it freaking rolls a six, gets to go before all of you, you walk up next to it, reveals itself, smashes you on the face. Uh, or, I mean, it comes to you even and smashes you, and now it gets to go first every turn after, you know what I mean? Uh, which is crazy. Unless you, one of your gear locks rolled a six, I guess, too, but... It's just cool how it can mess with the initiative that's built into the, into the baddies. Uh, okay, so baddie points create the battle queue using as many break as possible. So again, we're going to do it the way minion recommended. So we're going to just do three one-point baddies. Okay, we're going to set them up on the range positions. And when we reveal them, if they're not break, we'll shuffle them back in. I haven't scouted anything in there yet, so we'll just keep, we'll keep drawing until we find a break, and then we'll just shuffle it up. I like that solution. Uh, I like that solution. Okay. So let's roll the dice. Hmm. Okay, that's easy. Three, two, one. Nice low numbers. I like it. Don't roll a two, don't roll a two, don't roll a two. Six. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so here's the thing. We're going first. So do we just like rush at one and try to fight it? Uh, which one looks worse to you guys? <laughs> I like going over here because I think that maybe these guys won't be able to reach me or something. Well, at least this guy won't. But then I could go over here. I don't know. It's all the same, I think. I don't know. Maybe here. Number four looks worse. Wait, there is no number. Oh. <laughs> uh, Matthew says, so since you rolled twice, the number of the highest one you get to go two times before the three, right? LOL. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right side seems smart. All right, we're going with the right side. Yeah, until we pull it, it's like the worst one we attack first. All right. Uh, anything else? Nothing else, right? Uh, no. All right, let's go. Gale, move one for one dex. We have four remaining. Uh, I can roll three attack, a defense. Do I roll Sonic Squall? No, I think I save it. Because, again, I could find a baddie that's got smoke screen or something. I'll need that for maybe. Oh, yeah, here's the problem. Hold on. I just thought of something. It's going to be revealed before we even choose our dice. Okay, hold on. We got to reveal it first. Yes, Francis, exactly. Yeah, I just caught, I was like, wait, what am I doing? I need to know what it is first before I choose my dice. Yeah, yeah, this darkness stuff throws me right off, but I'll get used to it. Uh, it's a four health. It's the Lava Flow, uh, Troglodyte Scurrier, one attack. Initiative doesn't matter anymore. So, Lava Flow... I had to look this up because the way it's described isn't exactly clear. Uh, so it's a skill, but the sk it's one of those skills that's like always in effect, I think. So it says, uh, anytime it occupies a space, immediately turn it to lava. Which I think happens right away, not when we do the skill step um, for it. And so I think it turns every space to lava as it moves around the board. Um, but again, I had to look that up and I was not the only one. I found people asking that all over the place. It's definitely not clear. It literally has this description. Any rock position this unit occupies immediately becomes lava. Okay, but it's like, oh, okay. But it says in the baddie skill step, that's when skills happen unless they describe at some other point they happen. I just wish it had, they had a symbol for like passive in the game, you know, like an always on skill. Uh, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Once you know that, it's like, oh, it makes sense. But... When you read from the rulebook first, it's like, how does this fit in? It doesn't say at the start of round, after movement, before movement, anything that you usually see in the game. So that's what confused me. Uh, could use a few extra words, is all I'm saying. All right. 
So it's space is lava, but it's a break baddie. So it is it is sticking around. That is the baddie. We're using as many break baddies as possible, so we don't need to switch it out. Um, it's melee. It's not going to get hurt by the, the lava. So we just need to fight it like normal, I think, right? Yes, yeah, so only attacks for one, so I'm not that worried. I'm more worried about whatever the next thing is that moves over. But we'll find out. Uh, so we got two bones. I don't want to do this. Yeah, I'll do it this way. And two hits. Here, let's zoom in on this a little bit. Whoops, nope. Uh, let's do it like this. So we got two hits. Okay. And now the blue one moves. The yellow one moves. And it's adjacent to me, so it'll reveal itself. Uh, so it's not going to be this guy. It'll be this guy. Who has smoke screen, molten bath. I think that's the healing one. As it moves through lava or it starts to turn on lava, it heals or something. I'll, I'll look up that in a sec. But it starts with three health. Uh, it's for one. Uh, this one I'll just shuffle. Uh, molten Bath. Mm, molten Bath. This unit heals for number HP at the start of its turn if its position is lava and heals for number HP each time it moves onto a position with lava. So it can only heal up to its max, right? So, and Smoke Screen is if it's on lava, I can't attack it, right? Or target it, but I can still damage it. Smoke screen. When occupying a lava position, this unit cannot be targeted, but still can be damaged by non-targeted skills and other effects. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, then it's going to attack me for one. Bones misses. Okay. Uh, purple guy is going to roll one attack. Hits me for one. Round two, Gale. So we saw one unknown baddie. Who is worse here? I feel like I just go after this guy since he can heal. But then that opens me up for this baddie getting in there. And right now, he's going to take still another turn to get there. So maybe I should just focus on this guy so because then this guy still can't get in the party. But if I kill this guy, then I have two baddies to worry about fighting me. So I feel like I'm just going to attack this guy and try to finish him off. Um, and he's not on a lava spot yet. So I maybe I should take care of him first. You do have boots. Yeah, but I don't want to waste stuff yet if I don't need to. Save that stuff for like day four when it gets really hairy. Hmm. And it's only two uses, so. And they only hit for one, so like I want to use this when there's like a three attack baddie that's about to smash me and I can kind of get away from it maybe. I don't know. That's my theory. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll... I can roll five dice. I'm going to roll this. Okay. And I might use a backup plan to deal some damage to this guy. But maybe I don't need to. I'll still roll it all anyway because I can, right? Three, four, five. Yeah. Let's just roll it all. We, might not, we don't have to apply it all, right? All right. So we did get three attack. So we are targeting this guy we said, right? Um, so yeah, we'll just apply two of it. Kill this guy. Uh, we won't, I, I mean, I can deal one damage to this guy, but I, I'm going to save it, I think. I think. Because uh, we could get a better result on it. It can go up to three, but if it was a two, I would use it. But a one, not feeling it. I will put this one defense up here. 
Now these bones, I think I'll still hold off. I could deal true damage to this guy, or I would have spent this if I if I could have got a two on here, I would have dealt two damage and then spent my two bones and finished that guy off. But uh, I think I still want to try to unlock this spot with the third bone if I can. So we'll see. All right, so this one, I'll move this guy this way. We still don't know who he is or what's going on over there. And then the yellow, uh, it's not healing. Uh, it's just rolling one attack die against us. One. So just knocks my defense out. Round three. All right, now what are we doing? I think I'm okay to stay here. Okay, we're gonna roll defense for sure. Let's roll three attack. Yeah, let's just do the same. Let's do the same. I kind of want this guy to move on to this lava, so maybe I have some help there. So it's get oh, but it'll be break. It'll be break, so it'll be immune. So it didn't even matter. Yeah, I could I could move away after this. We'll see. We'll see. Still have four health though. But if I don't roll a defense here, could be in trouble. We'll make the decision after we roll. All right, we got a two on our uh, Sonic die here, or Sonic Squall. We did get one defense. No bones. Just want one more bone, man. All right, so we can kill the bat with the three. Right, it's not on lava. No smoke screen happening. Uh, so I, I won't use this. I can't. There's no adjacent. It's, it's fine. Yep. So it would be a good die to use to reveal that guy, but I think we'll just take it. I want to see what he is anyway, and I'd rather him do it on his turn rather than me wasting a die. Or, 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 or sorry, I'd be wasting a dex. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just let it, him go. Uh, and I know, uh, I don't want him on the lava probably, right? Because he's break. So I'll move him here. Is not a break, it's a troll drunkard, but we'll just. Only trolls, Batman. Oh, it's another lava flow guy, actually. He'll make the spot lava anyway. Troglodyte Whisperer. So the space becomes lava. He gains three health. He has one attack, one defense. Uh, these guys will shuffle back in. Yeah, I, Francis, exactly. I, I, the smoke screen, I, I remembered, and that's why I was like, wait, they're break baddies. I don't want them on the lava. Unless we were playing a scenario that turns off their ability or had some persistent effect or something. But uh, we don't right now. Okay. Uh, so he's just going to roll, finish his turn. Uh, oh, he rolled a bone on attack, so he doesn't even hit me, but he does get a defense. All right, round four. Gale. Three attack. This die. And we want a bone, so let's roll this also. Just give us our mechanical, mechanic protocol, please. Like, guys. I swear there's bones on this die here, I think. Unless I got a misprint. Yeah, two sides are bones, and it, it just won't do it. I don't even know what it was, but... Was it a two? No, I think it was a one, right? Um, but we did get a two, one, one, and a one. Uh, I'm debating not even hitting, like, just maybe tickling it, you know? So that I can go another round. I, I want to unlock this die. So, uh, I'm going to hit it for three. I'm going to choose not to apply this other attack die. One, two, three, down to one health. Okay. Uh, this I'm not going to apply. Yeah, this is the problem. This is why I should have took the one that had a bone on it. Because uh, maybe I would have rolled bones on my skill die there too, right? It's, it's biting me in the butt. Uh, yeah. Oh, it was two defense? Oh, even better. Great. At least it'll keep me around a little longer, right? I can play with my food a bit. Okay. 
<laughs> yeah, I picked up the wrong set of weighted dice. Oh, yeah, I need the ones that always miss. And then I switch to the ones that was hit after I, I get my innate plus one. <laughs> okay, see, the bad guys roll bones. That's funny. Uh, one defense again. No attack. Okay, great. Round five. Gale. I'm going to take this two defense out. I'm going to roll all these attack dice. And I'll, I'll just roll all the dice. It's fine. You. Do I have a, like a reroll effect here I can use? No. I'm just going to play with my food at this point. Uh, I'll hit him for one. I'll hit him for one. Take that off. Okay. He comes back at me. Yeah, let's train more defense exactly. Okay. So he gets two defense. He hits me for one. Great. Fatigue rounds now. It's getting spicy. Oh, he auto dies anyway. Ah, I shouldn't have killed him so much. Ah, whatever. I hate this game. <laughs> Stupid. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, we'll heal up anyway. It's all. <laughs> Serenity now. Serenity now. Not enough bones. Not enough bones. Hashtag not enough bones. Some people say too many. I say not enough ever. Okay, I'm fully healing as my recovery thing. Oh, I should get my loot first, right? So the vicious cycle. What the heck is this? Uh, after creating the battle queue during battle setup, look at and rearrange the battle queue in any order. It cannot be used in a tyrant battle. Perfect for when you want to go all in on your entrance. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we get a progress point. So we have three out of the five we need. And we get two training points. Well, I would love to train arm cannon right now. But you know what? We're going to train defense. <laughs> this is what we're going to do. Defense. Yeah, Yogi says one defense, one disorientation charge. Ah, I do like that one. I do like that one. <laughs> uh, we got it. We train one in defense. All right. We got it. Sweet. Now, is my decks okay? Maybe not. I'm debating another health, but I think we're okay. Disorientation charge. Hey, you like that one? Does it have a bone on it? That is the key. It has one bone. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know when the right time to take sidestep is, or if we should, but I do like it. It just sometimes in solo is kind of annoying, but uh, otherwise is really good. Okay, uh, what else? That's our two training points. Uh, we re recovered up to full. That was our individual option. We were loaded with loot, but I mean, I could easily throw some of it away to, to turn some uh, lava into rock, maybe. Which, that's what I wanted to look up. Doesn't say it in the loot section. Yeah, this is right here. Uh, on their turn, Gearlocks can discard a loot or troll loot to turn any lava position into a rock position. Flipping the position's chip to its rock side. Any. Any lava position. Wow. Okay. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, we gotta get, start getting rid of some of this and using it. 
Told you we should use the boots. <laughs> if I sidestep, it's not hitting me. Still good in solo, but then having to waste the decks to go back. Sometimes I'm okay taking a hit, especially if our defense is good, you know? Yeah, sidestep's still good, but... If my dex is high, amazing. But if my dex is not, then it's, yeah. Or I have still a lot of dice I want to roll. Yeah, it can be annoying. But it's still good. It is still good. Especially if you get Gust Rockets. But I can't even open any of these, so who knows. Okay, uh, day four. Tyrant encounter, fun times. That smell. This underground road breaks off into two rugged forks up ahead. There's only time on this journey to spy out the strategy of one of these troll siblings. The choice on this divergent path will determine which one is scouted and which one will remain an enigma. Rock uses his brute strength to manipulate the break's lava, smashing up rocky floors to torch his enemies. Roll survives is a her, I thought so. Roll survives on her cunning, swiping traveler's gear and <laughs> repurposing it to her own ends. Each sibling's followers have learned from their leader, and whichever way is chosen, a fight with enemies using their respective siblings' tactics is likely. The siblings do share one thing in common. They both smell awful, so there's no deciding things that way. <laughs> Alright. Uh, let's put a poll here. I didn't read it yet. Let's put a poll. So you guys can vote as we read. Option one, Hard Rock Cafe has the bonus of gaining a Trove Loot, but we still have to unlock it. And we don't really have a spot for it right now, but I'm okay throwing away loot if we need to, but we could use up some loot during the battle. Battle Cubati points at the start of each round, roll Rock's Tyrant die and apply the results. Blast Heat, each gear lock on Lava must exhaust a die from their active slots, lock slots, or skills area. Ooh. So this is like mischief, man. That's annoying. I don't know, that's kind of rough. How many sides is that? Let's see. Uh, it looks like three of each, maybe? No. Uh, two. Two of Blast Heat. So Blast Heat's only going to happen two out of the six sides. Four of them are Face Melter. Every position occupied by a gear lock becomes lava. So this definitely gives you a taste of what's coming in the Tyrant fight, which I like. Uh, or drum roll, please, could get us regular loot. Battle cube baddie points. So again, we're on day four. We're going to have four one-point baddies. Battle cube baddie points. At the start of each round, roll, ro roll, rolls, tyrant, die, and apply the results. So we could get some sweet merch, which I bet is only one of the sides. Yeah, uh, only one side has the uh, shirt. And then uh, we got the ticket master. Uh, each gear lock discards a loot. Okay, I'm okay with that, actually. And then bad to the bone. Uh, which I think is on three sides. Uh, each gear lock removes the rightmost die from their backup plan. Oh, so it makes... This is going to make it even harder to get our mechanic protocol if that one's chosen. Uh, yeah, because that, that... the Bad to the bone is three sides. Ticketmaster's two. Sweet merch is one. Either way, two training points are on the line and one progress point. So you guys vote in the live chat. We go with whichever option that wins. I am down. I am down. And while you're voting, I'm just going to take a quick wash and break. I'll be right back.
All right, we're back. Okay, let's close the poll and see where it's happening. Thank you everyone that voted. Also, thanks to all 68 people who clicked the like button. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, 59% voted for number one. We're going to the Hard Rock Cafe, everybody. Great. Hard Rock Cafe, Battle Cube Body Points. We're on day four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Start of each round, we need to roll Rock's Die. That's this one. I'm going to put it right up here to remind me. Okay. Go first batty, spot one. It's a break batty, lava flow, brimstone, draw gear lock. Okay. Uh, three initiative, three health, melee spot number one. Number two is an orc scavenger, three initiative, frenzy rating, one attack, one defense, three health. Space two, three initiative. Uh, the next one, a flame soaking one lava bat. Hmm. Three health ranged. Initiative four. I'll look up flame soak in a minute because I don't remember. I think that's the one where like if you're on lava, it pulls a chip from under you, puts it under that. But if you're not on lava, it'll take it from a baddie that's on lava or something. Uh bridge troll. Could have taunt with the backup plan. Big health. One attack, one defense. He's slow. Two initiative. Four health. Melee. All right. Uh, nope, we don't need this one. We need this one. Flame soak. Flame soak. Flame soak number. Remove number HP from the... Closest gear lock on a lava position and place the HP under this unit. May exceed its HP stack. That's great. If no gear locks are on lava, remove the HP from the closest baddie on lava if possible. Kill me now. Awesome. And it's range attack. And it's going to get 100 health. And we need to kill it. Hmm. Really wish I had that arm cannon so I could hit any baddie across the map right now. Serenity now. Okay, where are we going? Come on, roll four higher, please. Six. Oh, nice. Hey, six. I don't know what her numbers are. I was roll four, I feel like. Uh, two, three. I've never rolled a three ever. Rolled two a couple times, though. Four, four, five, six. Okay. It's a good initiative. I like. Good initiative is great for solo. That's a sign of a good solo gear lock, but again, I don't know, man. All right. Start of the round. Here we go. Oh, I'm not on the board yet. I need to go on the board first. Uh, what are we doing here? We got Frenzy rating. Rating doesn't matter. There's no other orcs. So this guy's only rolling one attack die. But if he hits on that one attack die, he'll roll a second attack die and could hit for more. Brimstone means he's a big chicken running away. Flame soak. Oh, lava flow. That's going to help me right away, actually. Except if this turns my spot into lava... Then the flame soak sucks, but I can move off of the space. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like I start here. And I could get trapped in. I'm still going to get hit by these three anyway if I go here. If I go here, I get hit by this guy, this guy, and this guy still. So I might just go in here. That's scary because then this guy can get around and get trapped by four. But if I kill this guy quick, then he doesn't get up to 100 health. He doesn't steal my health. Uh, this lava flow jerk face, he can't move away. But he does get a free defense to die as soon as I go in here, which is annoying. The taunt guy, as long as I kill this guy first, the taunt guy shouldn't be a problem. 
I feel like Flame Soak is the thing I'm most worried about, but also I could make an argument for Frenzy 1. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> Sakabra, finally got your copy as well. Nice. How's your dice tower looking? Does it have some magnet issues? Assuming you got the dice tower? I'm assuming you got it. That's why you waited so long like I did. Or maybe yours was the book. Oh, I lost the die. Oh, no. I lost the die, guys. Force him to drain other baddies. Yeah, but when he's draining the baddies, he still gets the health, right? So I still have to deal with it. But yeah, I, he'll be draining this guy, which is fine. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yours worked out? Okay. Cool. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, here we go. Uh... Each gear lock on lava must exhaust a die from their active... Okay, I'm not on lava. Deal with it. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Right? No lava. No lava. Okay. Gale. Uh, dex move for one. I can roll up to five dice... Four dice. So... Um... This guy is going to get a defense too, and he cannot move in the opposite direction because it just doesn't work that way. Um, I think I just go two defense and two attack, but I do want to kill right away. Yeah, I think I got a two defense, two attack. Although, maybe I do one Sonic Squall. No, no, Mel, you can do whatever. It's all good. <laughs> do whatever. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're not grabbing something from the board game table that I'm playing with. Yeah, do whatever. You can come in. Don't say anything. Stay quiet or you'll ruin the show. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. All right, here we go. I'm gonna roll a Sonic Squall, I think. Hopefully you can get me some extra attack. All right. Um, it got me too, but the attack die didn't get me an attack, which I was hoping on. So we did get some bones. I'm actually gonna put the attack here first. So that when I roll for Cool Breeze, if possible. Uh, I think I'll just apply the two. An exhaust sonic squall. Not the best opening ever. I was hoping for a little more defense here. Now I could just deal a true damage and we take out the lava bat. Is that a play I should uh, uh, do? Otherwise, he's going to attack me for one, probably knock away my defense. He'll steal a hell from this guy. And now he's I still got to deal with him. But it's still one extra attack die coming at me that I kind of don't want. So I think I will spend. But then again, I really want Mechanic Protocol to unlock this. But I think I'd rather do that when there's a few less baddies on the mat. Because day four is like always a problem. Day four is always a problem. Uh, so I'm going to spend it. I'll do a backup plan of uh, Vent Canisters, which I think is one true damage to an adjacent baddie. Yeah, let's just take out the Lava Bat. Just one less enemy to deal with. I think that's better. Because it's not like he's hurting the other baddies. He's making himself stronger. It's just transferring. So, yeah, no thanks. 
It'd be great if a guy had smoke screen, he'd be helping me, but it's not that's not the case right now. It's fine. Uh alright. Blue guy right here. Uh it's just gonna attack for one, right? He got a hit. Boom. Uh purple guy over here. We'll move him this way. And then green guy, he's gonna roll an attack and a defense. He gets a bone, he'll have taunt. Which means if I'm still there, I'll have to attack him. He just gets a defense. Hits me for one. We're not on shaky ground, right? So no lava. Okay, that's the first round. Round two. Let's roll the uh, awesome tyrant die. Uh, it's the skull on fire one. Face melter. Every position occupied by a gear lock becomes lava. So we have some lava under us now. Okay, sweet. So if we end our turn there, we're gonna take a true damage or whatever, so we should uh, kind of move. Mm, yep. Mm, yep. Sucks to waste the decks, but... Okay. Hmm. Move after with my boots. Now, it's like, who am I targeting here? I debate trying to roll this. Uh, I can manipulate this guy's defense, which means he gets less chance of taunt. I don't mind doing it against this guy either. This is the one that could do more damage to me with the frenzy. So I kind of don't want to get hit by him yet. So I kind of want to just kill him. But if I go up here and I don't kill him, uh, then I'm kind of going to get hit by three different enemies after. I kind of want to only be getting hit by two or less. So I could do... Uh, this Lava Flow guy is annoying. Because if I leave from beside him... Oh, well, I guess he'll come to me, right? So I don't have to chase him around, right? Um, also, I could have this guy come down here onto Lava, which would be good. If I move down after... Yeah, I'll use my boots this this attack. I think I'll just attack this guy, maybe. I think. This one's only three health, but two defense. This one's four health plus one defense. So they're both, they're like, the same. Mm. I'm trying to think who's going to bite me in the ass more later. I think I'll attack this guy because he actually has a defense stat. And uh, I'll use this. Um, so um, I got five decks, so I'll roll three, four, five, mm, no, I'm going to roll an extra defense, I still want backup playing stuff, I still would like defense to survive, I'm going to be getting hit by multiple baddies, yeah, let's just do those five dice, alright, bone, two attack, one, Two. Okay. A defense. And then I did get a 2-2 two, two on this one. So what this will do, I think, is two deal two damage and then reduce his defense stat by two. His defense stat's only one. Um, but it does put him down to one health left, which is nice. He could die from standing on lava or something. Right? That's how that one works. Yeah, deal number damage to an adjacent baddie, then place on the baddie until the end of the baddie's next turn. Its defense stat is reduced by number. Oh, it's only till its next turn, not for the rest of the battle. Hmm, interesting. I thought it was better than that. All right, then I'm going to use my boots once. Uh, after your resolve, your roll phase, move up to two positions. One. Uh, I think I have to go down. I'm trying to think, because I could have this guy move down here. I need to keep this spot open so that this guy has a path to move this way. And this guy can move this way. Yeah, I think here's the spot. So that this dummy steps on this. 
Might be a better one here. But I don't think so. Yeah. Okay, blue. Uh, lava, lava. Comes down, one attack die. One. Okay, purple. Uh, guy in the back here. He's just going to move for two. He's going to end his turn on lava. He's not a break baddie. So his feet are burning. And green. I'll go one and two. Uh, he's only going to roll one attack die. He hits for one. I'm down to three health left. And I think this is gone. Okay, round three. Let's roll the tyrant die. Uh, every position occupied by Gearlock becomes lava? Of course it does. I might toss loot to change that back, though, if we need. So I could toss a loot on my turn to fix that, or I could just move out of it with my boots after, or move right now. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna move with one dex. I'll move with one dex. I'm gonna kill I gotta kill this guy. He's the one who's gonna hit me the hardest. If I even if I miss a little bit, he'll die at the end of his turn. Uh this guy can make step on this lava. And he'll die at the end of his turn. And then I just have this dummy to deal with. That's my theory. Uh four dice to roll. Do I trust two attack dice? Sure I do. Sure I do. So I'm attacking the Orc Scavenger. Uh, I got the two I need to get rid of him. Okay. Oh, now I roll big defense. Okay, blue guy, I'll have him go this way. He'll roll one attack. It's for one. Uh, green guy, I'll have move this way. Rolls one and one. Uh, he hits me for one. After, or bef after putting defense on himself, end of his turn, he'll burn from the lava. Can we buy a bone? I wish. I wish. Okay. Oh, I think I did those guys out of order. No, I didn't. No, I did them right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, round four. Roll the tyrant die. I'm not on lava, right? I only have two health left, though. Oops. Uh, it is this one. Each gear lock on lava. I'm not. Don't care. Gale. Could keep this in here, it keeps me alive, right? But again, I want bones, so yeah. I hate this game. Alright. That could be the death of me though. I gotta be careful. I could heal myself for five with this suit melange. But I can choose after I see my dice rolls. Choose after I see my dice rolls. Alright. Bones. Serenity now. Alright, so I roll four attack. Uh, it's just shy of defeating him. But I think I'll still apply it all. Because I'm still one more round away from fatigue. Or should I play with my food a little bit? So I'll definitely apply the two to get rid of this. I'll apply one more. Uh, do I apply the last one? I mean, I could kill it right now, but no. We're going to play with our food. Even if he rolled a two, I'm still protected. I have, would have one health left. I'm not in fatigue, so I wouldn't die yet. What else could happen that could screw me? Even if my floor was turned to lava, I still have, uh, I could get off of the spot. 
So I'm not surrounded by lava yet. Yeah, I'll leave him at two health. I'll leave him at two health. I could I could just free up space with this, but like I I would probably just get rid of the vicious cycle. But yeah, you're probably right. Maybe I'll just heal. But then if I lose another health before I leave, I'll be upset. Like if he rolls a two, I lose a health, right? So if I heal full now, uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. A two. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. All right, round five. Tyrant die. Uh, is the arrow. Blast heat, each gear lock on lava. Not me. Gale. I'm gonna roll two defense. Three attack. Oh, you meant before the end of the battle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, I might do it, I might do it still. It does fully heal me, which is nice. Yes, yes, yes! We did it, barely. All right. Okay, uh, so I'm going to do my backup plan before applying my attack dice. Uh, mechanic protocol, I'll clear out the space for arm cannon. Okay, uh, so those are used up. And then... Yeah, I'll just heal. I have two or fewer HP, so I'm going to heal up to full. Five health. Okay, that loot's gone. Um, and then I'll apply the attack. Alrighty. Alrighty. Uh, so we get a trove loot. I don't know what it is, but, uh, or maybe you guys know what it is if you can see that tiny little picture, but I, I only seen a couple of them so far. 424. Okay, 424. Uh, alright. Uh, we do get a progress point. We're at four. And we get two training points. Two training points. I feel like health, dex, arm cannon would all be great. Or health and arm cannon. Five dex, is that still okay? Probably, right? I don't know, guys. Dex and hand cannon? Plus dex? Yeah. Alright, let's go dex. I'm a little worried about the health though right now. Uh, and then arm cannon. Alright. So we do want to get percussive blaster, maybe, and sidestep, maybe. Or one of the heals, maybe. That could be a thing. So we have a few skills that I would like, but I, again, this is a shorter playthrough, so we might not get that many training points, and I still would like more health. Maybe one more attack, but that I'd rather have a skill first, but uh, yeah. I feel like health is the, the, the hot one right now. Okay. Uh, recovery. We're full. Uh, let's take a lockpick attempt on four lever. Let's go on four lever. First attempt. Four lever. We got three force, one force, one trip, plus one and carry forward. Not happening. Um, so yeah, we'll fail on that one. We get a second attempt because we failed on our first one, not even opening a single lock. So yeah. Two force, two force, two trip. Uh, let's reroll the lever die. Whoops. I don't even think you can get four lever on here. 
But maybe we get the convert with it or something, or a plus one and carry forward. Uh, plus one, two lever. Nope, not enough lever to open it, so uh, we suck. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. We suck. All right. And... I think I'm going to look for better loot, maybe. I know switching the, the battle queue would be nice, but I don't know the tyrants that well, or the uh, baddies that well and stuff. So I feel like this is a better one when you know what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to toss this and look for better loot. Maybe I get better loot, maybe I don't. I get to roll six attack dice. And for any bones I get, I get to look at that many loot cards and pick one. Normally I roll zero bones, though, so I'll probably not get any, but... Arm cannon and health? Uh, maybe. What did I take? Dex? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we can switch it. Sorry, I just read the chat. Yeah, we'll go back to five dex and we'll take a health. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad that way with the dex, uh, especially going into day five with should only be a five point baddie, one baddie on the board. We can handle that, but the five points hit a little harder, so maybe having that health might be, might be a beneficial. But then having the decks, being able to roll more dice right off the first turn, we might be able to smoke them in one turn, you know? So we may have just got out of that. So we've gone for the longer battle with these stats versus the quicker battle. Um, but who knows? Maybe we survive longer. Not a single bone. Serenity now. Serenity now. All right, so we just threw away a loot for nothing, uh, as usual. Welcome to Rob's Gaming Table Plays Too Many Bones. Uh, everything's happening that usually happens. Uh, so, Unbreakable didn't change any of my luck. Awesome. All right, fantastic. <laughs> okay, day five. Let's do it. Oh, another Tyrant card. Oh, that's just great. They're usually harder, but that one we survived. Sometimes one wonders if Rock and Roll might finish each other off before this adventure reaches its destination. The troll siblings have been fighting for years with their foray to retrieve the great machine parts, only a brief intergnum in their typical regime of terror. I don't know these words. Who, who comes up with these words, man? The game's fun and silly, but someone's trying to be smart and refined. Uh, if they don't end each other, they may prematurely end this quest. The journey has just been interrupted by what looks like a rolling, earth-shaking brawl between the brother and sister, and if due care is not taken, the primary casualty might be gearlock in nature. Lawyers. <laughs> it's either lawyers or one thing I've learned from being in the tabletop gaming hobby for over a decade now is for some reason, the I feel like the most popular profession among game players of, of actual modern board gaming, not just People who play Monopoly and Uno and stuff. I mean, people who actually go to board game stores are tabletop gaming and the more hardcore side of the hobby. The most popular profession I seem to run into is teachers. It's, not, it's all teachers. I find teachers doing podcasts, playing the games, making content, designing games, working for companies. Former teachers love the hobby. Teachers running board game clubs uh, at their schools. Teachers buying board game stores, people, teachers working, retiring and working in distribution for tabletop gaming. Lots of teachers I've come across in this hobby. There's tons of them. They're everywhere. I don't know what it is. It's like, I guess it's the intellectual thing. The ever, the ever love for learning and teaching that a teacher has is great for the hobby when you're constantly reading and learning rule books and games and teaching and stuff, right? So it makes sense to me. I feel like whoever's writing this stuff is an English, a former English teacher who has a job at Chip Theory, who's like, I'll teach these, I'll get all these words I learned in university, I'm gonna inject them into the game and mess with them. So there you go. I, whoever wrote this, I know you're, you're a former English teacher. You can't hide from me. You can't hide from me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Greg, Greg says, not many accountants, right? This hobby is not financially sound one. Haha, <laughs> definitely has me in the red. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and teachers like dealing with people, right? And, and, the, and um, yeah, yeah, interaction and dealing with people. KDM is the game for accountants. But again, that game would put you in the red also, no? That's even worse. <laughs> oh, man. English majors need jobs too. Yes, Po'boy, yes, you know it, you know it. 
<laughs> just something I think. I don't know if it's true. It's just something I think. All right. Uh, we only have one option. Hello, goodbye. Battle queue bounty points add roll to the top of the battle queue. Or we're going to have a tyrant in our fight. I've not seen this one yet. All baddies consider roll to be an opposing unit. Baddies and party members oppose each other as normal. So baddies will fight roll. Unless I'm closer. At the end of the second round, add rock to the bottom of the battle queue. When rock enters the battle mat, remove roll if not already defeated. Encounter success is achieved when all non-tyrant baddies are defeated. Oh, that's clever. That's clever. It's like a cool little uh, foreshadowing, a little taste of what's to come. I, li I like that with the tyrant encounters, the way they do that. Yeah, that's very good. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, I don't know what we're doing here. Okay, battle queue is baddie points. We're on day five, so it's a five-point baddie. I wish I could have scouted that one, though. Uh, then it says, uh, add roll to the top. Okay, we're gonna add roll to the top. The end of the second round. Second round. We're gonna add this guy to the queue. When roll enters the battle mat, remove roll. Or when rock, sorry, enters, move roll. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, so it's top of the queue. We're going to have roll come in first on spot one with three initiative. Uh, melee, eight health. Blech. Oh, yeah, and they'll roll their tyrant die, right? Even though it's not a tyrant fight. That's not fun. And rolls is this one. Crowd surf, star power, I'm assuming you're in effect. Okay. Um, okay, then our five point baddie. Now I wish we had more baddie points here. Oh, look at this guy. I have not seen this one yet. Yeah, five point baddie. Yeah, I've never faced this guy yet. Orc Bruiser. Look at this guy, a two, two, seven health. Four initiative on an orc. Come on, man. Not, it's not a ranged orc either. Interesting. Maybe they do have decent initiative now that I think about it. It's the trolls that don't usually, right? Seven health. Okay. Basically, I'm in a wrestling match. Just gonna watch the big boys smash each other a little bit. Wow. Rage two. So that means when it's not full health, it's gonna be rolling two extra attacks. So attacking for four, right? Right, right, right. Uh, is that only against machines, or is it just raging in general? If this unit has less than full HP, it gains number additional attack die. Yeah, I should know rage. Rage has been around for a while. I used to listen to rage when I was a, when I was younger. Uh, anyways, okay. Uh, four initiative. Okay. And then this guy doesn't. He, I'm gonna put him here, but he doesn't come into round till round two, right? Uh, so, <laughs> all baddies consider roll to be an opposing unit. Baddies and party members oppose each other as normal. The end of the round, yeah. Yeah, roll is coming after me. I have to just survive. But we know roll is rolling around, only coming after me. But that, that means it could roll over other baddies. But the other baddies could attack roll as long as roll is closer than I am. So how, how, there's a way to set this up that is good, but I don't know yet. Here, let's roll this. Three. Oh, no. Oh, I put, picked the wrong die here. Dummy. Well, if only I had some loot to help me. The start of the round, remove your, move your any die up one spot on the any meter. I don't think I can use this till on my turn. Yeah, I don't think you use loot unless it's out of battle, you can use it whenever. But I think because we already started setting up the battle, we can't use it till our turn. So on our turn, we'll use this to move us up one, maybe. 
I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah. Here, here, here. Let's read uh, Roll's stuff. So Roll's movement. She moves as many positions as possible, taking the shortest route as possible to any available rock position adjacent to the strongest opposing unit. Roll can move through other units, and each unit she moves through deals one damage. There's no If there are no available rock positions adjacent to the strongest opposing unit, Roll does not move. So she's looking for a rock position only adjacent to the strongest opposing unit, which is just me. Star power roll can only lose HP from lava damage, fatigue damage. So I just have to avoid her. I just have to avoid her. I can't, I'm not attacking her whatsoever. I mean, I could deal damage with my dice, but she's going to get removed. Uh, so when does he go at the... At the end of the second round, add rock to the bottom of the battle queue. But then when does he enter? Does he enter at the end of the third or the end of the second? That's the part I don't know. Uh -huh. That's the part I don't remember. I feel like the end of the rounds when new baddies come in, right? What do the one does one happen before the other? Uh battle queue. Where is it on here? Oh, okay, I have the answer right here, right here. Yeah, so end of round, I'm adding him to the queue, and then after end of round, I add baddies from the queue. So he comes into play at the end of the second round, and roll will disappear. There's my answer. Right there on the garg. No, they actually enter... After end of round is <laughs> the step. Step G. <laughs> step G. So you think end of round would be the last step, but there is more uh, steps after. <laughs> but yes, Yogi, we win if the five point baddie is dead. So we should just go after that baddie, right? But that baddie does get to go first, and I kind of don't want it to reach me. So how is the best way to do this? So if I go here, this guy goes first. I could move him like here, here. Oh, he's opposing her, no? Yeah, he'll attack her if I start here. Which is kind of good. Not really, it doesn't really matter, but... Lane 3 would be start smart to start with, but then... If that's the case, then I would be the closest and I would be his target for sure, right? Oh, he's targeting two. Two weakest. Yeah, so I think I have to stay here because if I go here, he'll just move in two and hit both of us. Yeah, he does have two, uh, he does have two, uh, is, is, is targeting. Yeah, I'll just stay there. I'll stay there. Okay. So I'll do this. He'll go boom, boom. He's going to attack her. Uh, two and two. A 
I'm gonna use these movement boots somehow to mess with stuff here, I think. So, oh wow, he's got three defense. But he hits, uh, hits, uh, roll for two. Okay, now it's our turn. Uh, so if, if, like, I move this way, he'll take a true damage from her moving through him. That's kind of good, right? Man, I can't believe I got a seven point baddie on this one. That's crazy. Um, hmm. I think I'll roll here and then use my boots to move here, I think. Yeah. So I use one dex. Uh, I, I have four. I wish I had extra decks now. <laughs> Lazy cat, what's up? I'm late. Too much work. Were you mentioning component quality? Uh, no, I, I haven't seen an issue with that. Only my dice tray and my dice tower. No. I just have this one weird, uh, like, I just noticed this today, but I didn't notice it the other day. I don't know what that is. But, I mean, it's like, not the end of the world. I don't care. I don't care. No, I think it's okay. Sucks to hear that yours isn't, though. Um, but just contact support. Contact their support. Okay. Uh, Alright. So, four decks. Oh, it's going to rage for four attack on me. Oh, how do I do this and survive? Oh, yeah, I also have to change the initiative too, right? Yeah, I'll just do this now so I don't forget. Uh, but it'll do it at the start of the round. Yeah, I'll just do it now. I'm going to remind myself after. Yeah, I'll just get this there. Okay, um... Yeah, I, I don't know, guys. I mean, I could just go crazy and do all offense. But the thing is, the defense here will just negate the attack dice. This will help, but I don't know. Maybe it's dumb to do any of this stuff. Maybe I don't even hit him. This is pointless. But I like this to remove the defense stat, but... As soon as I remove some health, though, he is going to attack me. Uh, yeah, let's just do... Mm, yeah, let's do this. I think I need to build up bones, too. I'm not going to roll this. Oh, this could help, too, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's not roll any attack. Let's do this and maybe try to set up a, a hand cannon thingy. Hmm. Come on, man. I didn't even get one with like anything. It's just the regular. I'm not keep, I'm not doing anything with that. That's junk. Okay, some good defense though. Okay, I can do one damage. And then reduce his defense by two. And then I'll use the boots to move one. 
and two. This guy's gonna come out on space three. He'll go there. Yep. Okay. And then uh, she's gonna go to, let's go this way. So I'll have her move one, two, three. Do a true damage here. Right. Oh no, it's it's just regular damage. Oh, that's even suckier. Oh, I, I thought it was true, actually. Oh well. Yeah, that's sucky. I thought it would be more. Uh the tyrant rolls two attack dice and one defense and her tyrant die. Okay, so my backup plan stuff costs an extra bone till her next turn. She gets a defense. She hits me for two. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go up here. That's the end of round one. Round two. Gale. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to attack this guy. All right. Okay. What's this one again? Let's like remove his skills. Oh, but it's only one point or less, right? Ah! Disable effect. If this unit is one point or less baddie, the skills are suspended. Oh, I wish I could turn off the rage. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. Okay. Back you go, arm cannon. Uh, but I did do three attack, could be four damage, and one shield. Four damage, probably should just go with it, but that will give him two extra attack dice. Uh-huh. Uh, no, removing his defense stat just stops him from rolling future defense. It wouldn't remove shields. It's not like I'm reducing his active slots. Remember, this, this die on him is just like if I have this here. Like, if I lose a defense right now, I don't think that it removes one of these, but maybe it does. I don't know. I don't know. Does it? I can't remember. Is that a thing? I don't remember. Full attack, eh? Yeah. All right. Four damage. One, two, three, four. All right. It's got four health left. All right. Uh, purple guy. So he's, he's only has, uh, he's rage two. So he's gonna roll four attack. But no defense for now. Why am I grabbing more dice? I have some here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, so how, how would I find that? Where would that be? Uh, let's see, defensive uh, stat maybe? Oh man, there's like eight pages listed here. Defense, 12 to 13, let's see. Uh, defense, your defense stat is the number of defense dice you have available to roll each turn. Each defense die costs one dex to roll in battle. Each roll defense may be placed in an active slot. 
must use actual rolls, cannot combine results from two dice into one. The total defense dice currently in active slots will reduce available defense dice for rolling this turn. The total number of defense in your active slots is the number of damage you prevent. Decrease defense by this amount. I don't, there's nothing here saying that your defense stat is tied to the amount of defense dice that can be in active slots. Unless it's in a, an additional FAQ, but this is like the third rule book or fourth rule book they've made. So I would hope it would be listed in the defensive area. Yeah, I feel like it's only tied to how many you can roll. Because what about when loot gives you defense dice to put up here? You're telling me I'm not allowed to put them in there if my defense stat doesn't let, allow me? I don't know. I don't know. If you know the answer, let me know the rule book page you found it on. I appreciate it. But nothing is there on 13 and 14. But, but yeah, it does make a difference, but I don't know. I don't know. I am not the expert. Okay. Did I roll these? Is this what he rolled? Or did I just put that down? I think I just put that down, right? I'm just gonna roll it. Uh, so he's attacking me. Here we go. Uh, attacks me for, I think that was the same one that was in there. Uh, four, attack. Two, get blocked. Two, get through. I'm down to four health. Boss. This is very bad, guys. This is very bad that I don't have a healing loot right here. Okay. Um, so she's going to roll two attack. Uh, defense and her tyrant die. No, no defense. No defense because she's got a defense on her. Uh, two attack. I'm down to two health left. And remember, the new tyrant coming in is going to go before me, too. So that's a problem. Yeah, I think I'm dead, guys. Uh, that sucks. Okay. Uh, so I have to lose a loot for her tyrant die. And that's it. All right, end of the round. This guy goes in the queue. He's going to come in. He's going to take chip number three. Eight health. Uh, lane three is taken. So goes to lane four. Not there. Lane one. Okay, maybe he won't get me yet because he's over here in lane one, I think, right? Lane one melee. Goes to the top of the queue. Round three. Uh, it's already. So does he want to fight her? Oh no, when she, he comes in, she goes, right? Yeah, she's gone, right? Huh. Okay, one defense, a bone, doesn't do anything. What's this firehead stuff do? Face melter. Every position that is currently occupied by a roll or a gear lock becomes lava. Uh-oh. Gale, we survived. All right. I just need to kill this guy and I win. Four damage I need. Uh, it's not going to happen though, guys. Uh, unless I get lucky. Three attacks that. Unless I get two uh, bones here. And then two attack from here. No, I need three attack and two bones. Or four attack. This die is useless now. Oh, man. So useless. Useless, useless. 
So I need to roll four damage or I'm done. Uh, I have no way to run away. So it's YOLO. YOLO! Or if I got four bones, maybe that would be a thing too. Uh, uh oh, yeah, I'm in trouble. So I got two attack, two bones. Yeah, it's not gonna be it. So I can put these here. Okay, back up vent canisters just does a true damage and then two damage. Yeah, I'm one shy. That's a too bad. That's a too bad. All right, purple guy is gonna roll four dice on me. And he smashes me for four. One gets blocked. Three gets through. I'm toast. Boom, boom, boom. So this guy's gonna go to the back of the five point stack. The tyrants. That's crazy fighting tyrants already. Oh yeah, end of my turn I would have lost a health too. Yeah, yeah. But I still would have been alive. But either way, he's killing me. Does not matter. Yeah, I wouldn't have needed to roll like four defense there, but then even the boss would come and hit me. Yeah, no defense wasn't the solution. I need a higher attack stat uh, or higher dex there earlier, but it's fine. I think my attack should have been higher. That's okay though. Uh, all right, so let's reset this. And this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. Okay, right to recovery phase. Obviously, we're going to heal up. We get no training points, no rewards, no nothing. Big waste of time. Back to our six health. Oh, so the correct answer there was uh, the previous two training points should have been spent on uh, dex and attack. But attack first, if we fail, then we put it in dex, and then we try attack again. That's really the answer for based on what happened there. But we didn't know. We didn't know what was going to happen. And we didn't know the luck we were going to have with this, this crap down here. Okay, uh, so this is for tyrant time later. So this goes away. We don't get any progress off that. I'll just throw it off to the side. Actually, I'll just throw it up here. Okay, uh, then we're on today. Oh yeah, uh, can I still make um, a, tr a, a trove loot attempt, right? Because uh, it's that's in recovery, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's try a lockpick attempt, actually. All right, we're still trying on lever. Oops. Uh, okay, so I can convert. Hmm. We got two lever. I can convert. I'll convert this one to tr uh to lever. So we have five lever, whatever we open. Uh, we open one lock. Okay. Uh, then those are used up. Now we're gonna go for the trip lock. And this one we can re-roll. Looking for a two trip minimum. And no, we didn't get it. So our trove loot is not getting opened. We're struggling on the lock picking. Yeah, the arm cannon didn't do anything for us. Again, like I said, in solo it's like maybe not the greatest. But if we could have got like uh, you know, a disarm locked in, you know, that we can do to a baddie, or bleed we can put on a baddie, or poison two we can put on a baddie. It's amazing, but like, if we don't see any of those every time we roll it, it's just annoying. It's just annoying. But again, if we had our innate plus one and we got this side, you know, we could lock that in, and then we have that for the rest of every time we roll a blue die, we add poison two to the enemy we hit. Amazing, right? But again, a short playthrough, this maybe wasn't the right die to go for. I don't know. I don't know. Karth, Karthik, thank you so much for the super chat. Here is the loot to win the game. Time for me to go. It's nice catching you live. Love your videos. I wanted most and watched most of them. 
As always, keep making more and we'll watch it offline. Thank you, Rob. Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate the super chat. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, no, two bones can't heal. One bone can maybe heal. Again, how the cool breeze works, the first one. I take the die out of here and roll it. And as long as it's not a miss, uh, I heal one. If it's a bone, it then goes, uh, you know, to the rightmost spot, and then you shift them down. So it, if it's the only bone, it just stays there. But it, it's a big maybe heal, especially if it's defense dice in there, right? So if I take that out and I roll it and I get another bone, I don't get to heal, it just goes back in. And it's only one point of heal. So it's like not the best heal. It's actually pretty junk. But, uh, I mean, it could be the difference in, in some situations. But in solo, it's like you need a little more than one heal usually. Especially with the lava damage stuff going on too. At least that's how I feel, but I could be wrong. All right. Um, so day six. How do we not have enough progress? I thought we would... Oh, because that was day five, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have enough progress. So we have to win the next day. And we know it won't be a tyrant encounter at least. Yeah, you're only allowed to use your backup plan once per round. Once per round. Okay, Indiana Bones and the Temple... Sorry, Indiana Bones and the Doomed Temple? This place is a death trap. Literally, peering out from behind a stone column, I see a group of baddies laboring over a large squared-off lava pit, one that seems to have been carved, or the contraption arrayed over it. <clears throat> Sorry, one sec. Throat tickle. Uh, the device appears to be a cage that can be lowered via crane into the lava, a perfect device for the grisly public execution of an adventuring gearlock. That thing belongs in a museum for torture devices, not in, modern, uh, not in modern civilized society. If I'm being honest, the scene before me gives me the willies. But someone's got to put a stop to it, and if not me, who? If I leave this behind and it harms some other gearlock seeking fortune and glory, I would feel like my heart was ripped from my chest. Oh boy. All right, I'm gonna put a poll and we'll see. Maybe one option is like very obvious, but I'll still put a poll before I even read it, just so you guys can a vote. It's time to whip this place into shape. So the first option would get us an extra training point. We are kind of maybe playing catch up now. Um, battle cube baddie points, so it'd be day six. So it'd be a five and a one point baddie before the battle. The, cent the four center positions of the battle map become lava. No other positions may become lava. And lava deals plus one true damage. After the gearlock deals at least two damage to an adjacent baddie, they may move the baddie to any available lava position. Each melee baddie without a backup plan skill gains heave bone. This unit's target is placed on any available lava position if available. If possible, sorry. Oh god. So, that is cool. This is one of the cool ones where it like totally changes up what's going on. I love this. Uh, so again, the four center would become lava. And that's before battle. So, we're only going to have two baddies. So, they're not going to go on these two positions, but that would be awesome. But if we do two damage, at least two damage to adjacent baddie, we can uh, put it on any lava position. And then if it's still there at the end of its turn, it will take two true damage instead of one. But it applies to us too. And if baddies roll bones, they get to put us on lava positions. We can still get off of them, but if we're stuck there at the end of our turn... Um, and we're wasting decks to get off. We're either getting damaged or we're like low on decks, right? Option two is this isn't my first time in a doomed temple and sequels are never as good. Shaky ground. So instead of the first four lava positions, every time we lose HP from being attacked as a gear lock, we will change the tile under us to lava. So that means we got to keep moving basically. But it still only does one true damage. Battle cube body points, so a 5.01. And the gear lock, oh! The gear lock is immune to lava damage. 
Mm. So this is cool though. Um, no other positions up here become lava. So even if we have any break baddies that are turning things to lava, I don't think they can do that. But they're still immune to it though. So if we draw two break baddies, that makes the first one suck. Like the first one would suck, right? We would be the only ones getting hurt by it. And then otherwise it's just in our way. And if they have smoke screen and stuff, that's annoying too. Um, yeah, it, I, both could be super bad based on what we draw. Mm. Part of me wants to go with the first one because we're behind on training points because we lost the day. But then if we lose again, we lose the whole game because we won't have enough training, won't have enough progress points to even fight the tyrant. So if we win, we can fight the tyrant on the last day and we have one attempt on the tyrant, that's it. So that's risky. I don't know what you guys would do, but again, we need this progress point or it's over after this. If we fail this, it's done. Our whole run's done. Heave is right there. Heave is right there. Heave colon. This unit's target is placed on any available lava position if possible. And I would choose, I would choose where to place me. So I could place me further away and make then the baddie would have to move on to the lava to get to me. I could do that. But again, if it's a break baddie, they're immune to the lava. But we did pull out a whole bunch of break baddies earlier in that one, right? Where we had to get as many breaks as possible in the darkness. So maybe there's not many break baddies left in the stack. Maybe. Maybe. Jamie, welcome. Only three hours late. You're going to have to stay after stream and explain yourself. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to close the poll. Oh, man, this is rough. I don't know. N number one, 62%. All right, I, uh, uh, let's do it. Let's just YOLO. We don't see the Tyrant fight, we'll see it in a future stream when we do a campaign or something, who knows. Or maybe we could just fight them again with like a different gear lock, I don't know. But we'll see. I'm, I'm a little worried. <laughs> I'm a little worried. But maybe we get a good draw. So I've already changed these before battle. Okay, so the four starting spots are Lava. Battle queues, Batty points, so we get a five and a one. Five and a one, five goes on top, right? Okay. Uh, what else we need to know? Risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, exactly. That's how I usually play, right? It's like YOLO. Yep. All right. Five on spot one. Okay, good, good. It's something that can at least be damaged. The only problem is as recover two. So literally every time it takes two damage from lava, at the start of its next turn, heals two right back. Has six health. So we need to like, it has three initiatives, so hopefully we go before it. Maybe gets it damaged by lava, and then we get to attack it first and finish it off before it heals. And Aaron's right, uh, it is only melee baddies without backup playing skills. Melee baddies, so this one has heave. This is a melee baddie without a backup playing skill. So this one has heave bones also. And reach is horrible. Reach is horrible. Let me show you what reach is. I'll show you. Reach sucks, especially in this one. Reach sucks. All right. Uh, reach. At the start of this unit's turn, the closest opposing unit not already adjacent is placed on an available adjacent, uh, position adjacent to this unit, if possible. If an adjacent lava position is available, the opposing unit must be placed there. So in this scenario, having four lava spots in the middle, there's probably going to be an adjacent lava spot to this dummy, and we're going to get put there like every time. I hate reach. Like, even if I'm all the way across the map, this thing just pulls me right to it and punches me. Sucks. I hate reach. I think it's my worst. The worst skill, I'm pretty sure it's new to this one. Or was that an undertow? I don't remember. But yeah, I hate reach. It's, it's so annoying. It, it, you lose flexibility in the scenario, and I hate that. But 
It's part of the puzzle. Part of the puzzle. All right, let's see our one point baddie. <laughs> Anyways, Serenity now. Serenity now. Serenity now. Okay, so another troll, uh, fittingly named, uh, going on spot two. Melee baddie without a backup plan skill, so also has heave. Uh, yep. Who said that's basically never gonna happen? Aaron, I'm gonna ban you from the chat. As Aaron says, only melee baddies, so probably won't happen. Aaron's obviously not really watched my playthroughs and how my luck happens uh, live on stream, unedited. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> you spoke it into existence, yeah, yeah. With the reach and... Aaron spoke the other one. Look at that, another reach. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'll shut this stream down right now. All right, anyways, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. So remember, lava deals extra damage and no other space can become lava. Five, five initiative, all right. So, uh... Yeah. Uh, so I probably should. Okay. So I'm thinking just go after the big boy. The problem here is though. Uh, yeah, I should just stay here, right? So he can't pull me onto lava, but I can put him on lava. The only problem is this guy's gonna pull me over to this lava after, but he goes last. I think I just go after this guy. <laughs> uh, isn't in extra damage only when placed there? It says each lava deals plus one true damage. And that's, that'll be at the end of turn, right? The only problem is this guy recovers too. It's like I could be fighting this guy forever. Or, no, yeah, the problem, they don't even move. That's so annoying. Kill one of them in turn one? Then I probably should go after this guy then if I want to kill one in turn one, right? But this guy has six health and has recover too, so I kind of need the true damage to help me get rid of this guy. And he has defense, right? So I feel like I should just get this guy onto lava ASAP. And the only way to do that is dealing him damage. And the best way to deal him damage is before he rolls defense and gets a defense die on top of him to prevent me dealing damage to him. So, I think I can just go YOLO like crazy offense. Yeah, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just go all offense. Let's go nuts. I could argue that one less attack die and putting this die in could lead to like poison two, bleed. Mm, but I don't trust this die. Yeah, let's just go. Yeah, yeah, I can move the baddie if I do at least two damage. I can move him onto here. He'll recover two on his turn, but then he'll get two true damage at the end. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bye-bye! Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go, Yogi. You happy? 
I killed one in the turn one that I didn't. Th I mean, I meant to do that. I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Right? Nothing stopping that. Six health. Yep. Our first five point baddie down. And then this guy will go. He'll reach me to here. Okay. Uh, and then he'll just attack for one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Round two. What do we want to do here? Going to stay here? Should I just stay here? Uh, it's two true damage, right? But it'll just pull me back onto the space anyway, but if I move one, two, that's two. Oh yeah, he won't pull me if I'm already beside him, right? That's only if I'm not adjacent to him, right? Yeah, it's only if I'm not adjacent. So I'll just go here to be safe then. Because you never know, I could roll the like worst. Uh, so... Could play with my food a little bit. Yeah, let's play with my food a little bit. Oh yeah, I could put him on the lava, but I'm not worried. He's only rolling one die. I want I want to get my uh, Nate maybe, but I I like yeah. There's one bone. Great. Uh, I'll hit him for one. So it does not move him. That's fine. That's fine. He'll roll one against me. Uh, blocked. Round three. I can roll two defense, three attack. Come on, all bones. Three bones? Woo! I'm going to put it in this order. Uh, I could apply three more damage. I will apply... Uh, let's apply just one damage. And I won't apply the two. Okay, I don't want to move him anyway, so who cares? Alright, I know I could choose, but... He'll attack me back. Bone! It's all coming together, guys. Round four. Defense, defense... Three attack. I just need two more bones. Uh, should I roll this now? If I get the two bones, I can put this in. Yeah, I need to roll this to get a good result. Uh, what am I rolling? I'm rolling way too many dice. Uh, no, I won't roll this yet. But if I can lock that in right now... No, I do need to roll it. Because it's going to take me... Uh, does he heave me? Oh, he does. You're right. He does. He rolled a uh, bone, right? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. He'll just put me there anyway. Oh, I forgot. Thank you, guys. Um, oh, do I have to move off then? No, I'm not moving off. Get out of here. I'll take the true damage. No bones! Ah, oh, but I got the purple thing. Or, not the purple thing, the poison thing, I should say. Different P word. Hmm, that's what I need, and I need to put it in here. Uh, I needed two bones there, that sucks. Uh, I'll just hit him for one. And then I take true damage at the end of my turn. He'll go roll one die. Bone, I'm already heaved, it's fine. Round five. I'll take these out. Oh man. Yeah, I just got to roll.
Yeah, this sucks. One bone, you piece of crap. Oh, well, I rolled five damage. That's great. Um, how do I want to do this? Could go one more round if I put this in here. But then he could kill me because I'll take two true right now. I'll be down to one health with only one defense. He rolls a two, I'm dead. Yeah, this sucks. I think I just have to end it. I'm so close though. It's okay. Um, yeah, I'll just... Um, mm, yeah, it doesn't matter. That's all sucky. Whatever. I'll just deal him some damage. Whatever. He's dead. Who cares? That's so depressing, man. So depressing. You roll freaking bones. Bones, bones, bones. We won. Yay. Okay. Uh, reward phase. Let's take our two loots. Ice pack and comfy hiking boots. Well, how many, how much footwear do we need here? Uh, oh, look at this. Ignore HP loss from fatigue or lava damage up to three uses. Comfy hiking boot, single use. After adding yourself to the battle mat, move your any die to the top of the any meter. Well, that's nice to have uh, before the final battle in case we roll low initiative. Sure. Uh, we get the final progress point we need. And we get two training points. Two training points. We officially made it. And we're going to day seven, so we have to do the tyrant fight now. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's try for training points. Actually, we got to do first training points. I definitely want a dex, uh, and I think I'm gonna up my attack. Let's try attack first, though. Two. Uh, we get it. Attack going to four, and then I think my dex just to six, and then in recovery. Uh, for individual option, we're definitely healing up to our six health. Um, and then we'll try some lock picking. Uh, what are we trying for? Two trip? Got it. Right here. Two trip. Okay. Two trip. Okay. Now we're going for four force. Uh, no dice. Oh, I hate this game. All right. Can't even convert. No. So we fail. That's fine. We're not even going to get our trove loot. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I really wish we had sidestep though and didn't take this die. This die has turned out to be such a letdown. But maybe here's the play. Maybe we roll it early and we get what we want and we take the long call, long game to this final fight. So day seven, again, we have to defeat this tyrant in seven. So this is our last day to do it. We only have one attempt. So let's gear it in. Uh, I don't know. That, here's why I'm not going to peek at the trove loot right now. Maybe at the end is because there's still a chance we could get it and how we could get it is remember, we might get some sweet merch. And some of that loot allows us to unlock trove loot on the fly. So we could just get some loot that we throw away to unlock our trove loot and we get it in the middle of the fight. But maybe it doesn't even help us. Like, I don't even know what it is. I don't care, but we'll leave it till the end of the stream. A, because I don't want to cheat. And B, I want you to keep watching as long as possible, Minion. So I'm sorry, you can't leave yet. You have to wait. It's not like you can come back later and just watch it whenever you want and scrub through, so. Don't even try it. All right. Anyways, got to got to keep you hanging around, right? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay. So let's review this again. Rock and roll. Since childhood, troll siblings rock and roll shared a passion for banging heads in the pursuit of power. 
The death of troll ruler Nam offered a vacuum atop the troll hierarchy, and Rock and Roll teamed up using their brawling prowess to take control of the underworld tribes. As the siblings' reign has continued, however, their jealousy has reared its ugly head, and ugliness only rivaled by the heads on the trolls' own bodies. Okay, so here we go. Shaky ground. Okay, we gotta remember that's on. So anytime a gear lock loses HP, takes damage from HP, not buff HP, regular HP damage, I have to change the tile I'm on to lava if it's not already. Battle queue is baddie points. Unfortunately, it's day seven, so we're gonna get a five and two ones. So quite a few baddies. And remember, all baddies must be defeated for encounter success. We're gonna set up the lava to look like so. So let's set up our lava. Okay. Also in the baddie queue, we're gonna uh, use as many trolls as possible. So I probably should have looked at that first. Uh, none of them are trolls, literally. Uh, okay, so I'll just keep discarding till I find trolls. There's a troll. Not a troll. Not a troll. Not a troll. Okay. We're gonna shuffle these up, or I don't know if you shuffle these up or you just look through it. I don't remember, but I'll shuffle our, our uh, defeated one pointers and I'll just keep drawing till I find one. Okay, any day now. Any day now. Serenity now. There it is. We got the bridge troll. So bridge troll is also in the queue. Uh, and then are the five point baddies. Okay. I saw that it was a troll. I didn't see what it was though. Uh, okay. So now we're going to place rock on top of the queue, then place roll on the bottom. No, wait. Place rock on top, then roll on top. Okay. Rock on top, then roll on top. Okay. Uh, all baddies. All baddies, including Rock, consider Roll to be an opposing unit, and Roll considers Rock to be an opposing unit. Baddies and party members oppose each other as normal. All baddies must be defeated for the encounter success. Then we have this that we've been looking at already. So we have Rock, who at the start of Rock's turn, his position becomes Rock, he has recovered two. Okay, Rock Tyrant die. Until the start of Rock's next turn, Lava could deal one extra two damage. Or every position the gear lock or roll are on become lava. And then again, we have rolls, tyrant skills, has crowd surf for its movement. She moves as many positions as possible, taking the shortest route to an available rock position adjacent to the strongest opposing unit. And remember, she is opposing to us and rock, not baddies. Okay. She can move through other units. Each unit she moves through is dealt one damage. If there's no available rock positions adjacent to the strongest opposing unit, she takes a nap. Okay? She doesn't move. But I'm assuming she would still attack her target beside her if she had one beside her that was opposing her, which is only us. Star power. Roll can only lose HP from lava damage, fatigue, and damage dealt by troll baddies. She could give us extra loot, she could make us discard loot, and she could be bad to the bone, which makes us spend more bones for our backup plan for that round, which sucks. Okay. Fantastic. Actually, I'll put this stuff here it's closer and I can read it. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Puns all over the place it's, it, and culture, cult, pop culture references. Yeah, it's part of the silliness of the game. Uh, all right. But it is a hardcore serious board game, though. I take it serious, at least. Crowd surf, star power. Okay, so we got roll coming into play first. Eight health. Okay, you guys ready? Eight health. Lane one, three initiative. Okay, she is going after Rock or us. Whoever is strongest. Okay, and then number two spot is going to be Roll, cleverly, on the opposite side of the mat. Uh, yeah, one more. Eight health also. 
four initiative. Okay, is recover two. Um, and then in spot three. Yeah, scouting for like um, baddies who hit good on a uh, roll is great. But then if they're ones that hit you after roll is gone, it's like, that's not good either. And if they have high health, which sucks. So here's our five point baddie has recover one taunt uh, on the backup plan. Three attack, one defense. Ooh. Ooh. Five health, space three, melee going at three. And our first of two one point baddies. Remember, we got to clear the queue. We have that bridge troll. Four health. Also has taunt, one attack. Going at two. Then we have us. Four. Oh, we're at the top anyway, so this loot's not really needed. But we will have to throw away loot for her die. So maybe that'll help us keep the ice pack around. All right, what are we doing here? So remember, let's let's talk it out here. So roll. If we're oh, okay, so the strongest baddie right now, her strongest opponent is obviously uh, this Roid using troll over here who has eight health. Okay, we're only at six, so I think. Yeah, she goes after the strongest opposing unit. So even if we started here, my understanding is she is going to go, I want to fight this guy. So she wants to go to this rock position. She will roll. I can make her roll through this guy in one damage, this guy one damage, this guy one damage, and end up here. She will then attack this guy because he's the strongest opponent. Right? Right? Okay. I think. But then these guys... They also oppose her. So if she's here, this guy, uh, this guy actually would just come after me because I'm closest. So I would need to get away from here. So maybe I move like here and then, I don't know. Maybe I move here and I go down here, right? After, after on my turn, I like don't even attack anybody maybe. Because if she... Uh, oh, she goes after him. Oh, she goes after him. My bad, my bad. He goes first. So I need him not to reach me. So he's going to go after whoever's closer out of us too, right? Yeah, they only look for target if non-adjacent. Um, you might be right. But in her move step, it's weird how crowd surf works. So for her movement step, right? It's kind of like overrides all of that stuff, I feel. As long as there's a rock position beside. Am I wrong? Like read crowd surf, dragon. What, what conclusion do you come to, right? For rolls movement, so when we get to the movement step of baddies, right? Okay, we get to move. Like, it's after targets. But it, it's like, her move step happens. And I feel like she rolls all the way across the map, you know? That's her idea, that's why she's roll. Yeah, I feel like it overrides it. Otherwise, it's pretty boring. She just stands there and never moves, right? I feel like her whole theme is she's rolling around the mat, right? Target is before move. So can target you skipping move? Yeah. Oh, these are um, these are just three health chips. So if I if I'm ever playing four player and you run low on chips, there's uh, uh ones that have three on them, which helps uh when you're like 
when you're playing four player, uh, these premium chips are not enough. Uh, you will have buff HP, you'll have way too many enemies. Some of the tyrants need tons of HP. So this, uh, I think these are from Splice and Dice, um, but they just help with the extra HP that you can get in the Splice and Dice uh, tyrants and things. It can get really out of control in a four player game. And I hate when you have to start mixing in regular HP. Um, so that helps with that. So that's what those are for. Mm. Mm. yeah so so here's what i understand from reading the rules it, it says it, it basically doesn't say it just says a baddie if it's melee and not adjacent to an opponent, it will move. But it doesn't say ignore the movement step if it's adjacent or anything. And then it even says here, like, for her movement. So I'm going to play it that her movement, even though she determines targets, uh, she gets to her movement step and crowd surf overrides the movement step. And she wants to go after the strongest baddie, moving to the rock position beside the strongest baddie. It's not even like she's changing targets. She's just changing what she's doing in the movement step, where normally she would not move. Instead, she's going to crowd surf. Otherwise, I think this baddie wouldn't really do this ever, and that's kind of lame. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. So I'm going to start here. It doesn't matter. Um, or I start here. Yeah, I think I just start over here and I don't do anything really. Uh, I'm just gonna roll, I can roll two defense. I'm gonna roll arm cannon. I can't make her lose any health because it's not lava fatigue or I'm, I'm not a troll baddie. So I'm just gonna roll these three dice. I guess technically I can roll more uh, to try to get bones, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So let's do my turn first before we even get to any baddies or tyrants or anything. All right. Oh, so I could apply bleed. Uh, I could apply bleed when I use my blue dice. I think I keep that, right? Three defense. Okay, okay. And my attacks all roll attack, but I can't I can't do anything to this tyrant, so they just are wasted. Yeah, I feel like bleed's good enough, right? Oh instead of rolling attack. Oh I'm I see. I could place this here. Does that come into effect right away? Oh, hold on. When active, yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have rolled these. Hold on, uh, recall. I would roll these maybe and like one attack, right? We'll just say the one attack. I'll just roll again. Um, because I think I could make it active first and then I could affect the skills I roll in the same roll, right? Uh, I think so, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, so instead of rolling the three attack dice, I would roll this with this. So if this turned out to be something good, I could then apply these to a baddie not beside me, right? 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 Which that's what I would want to do, because I don't want to hit this baddie. So like, why am I rolling attack dice other than maybe getting bones? But we know how that works. So with these, now these can be ranged now, right? I don't have to apply them, um, but I could. Now putting bleed on a recover two guy is probably dumb, right? Or recover one. But again, this guy hits for three. Oh, I can do four damage though and put bleed on. So I technically bleed would happen first before recover, I think, right? So I could hit this guy for four, put bleed on him, he dies on his turn, and I don't have to worry about him hitting me, right? But he does also do three damage, which would also hit roll, which would be amazing. But I'm so close to him that he's coming after me. Hmm. Hmm. Or I could, I could hit this guy for four. But I also need him around to fight her because I can't damage her. Yeah, with four damage, rolls, crowds. Oh, yeah, route, roll. she'll roll over him too, right? Yeah, that's true. He'll get rolled over. So the bleed's kind of useless then. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> How should I do it? How should I do it? Probably just kill this guy. I need to kill all the baddies anyway, but a new baddie will come in. So I, I have that too. Yeah, let's just do it. Let's just kill this guy. Put bleed on him. Not kill him. Four damage, I should say. Four damage. He's down to one. He has one less defense stat. He's bleeding. Or, or, I could save one of the dice. Hold on. Could save one of the dice. I could just do two damage. And bleed. Let me think about this. If I do two damage with bleed, he's down to three health. He gets rolled over. He's down to two health. He'll then bleed, but then recover. And he'll still hit me. Yeah, that's fine. But then I could have another die still to put bleed on someone else later. I can split up the dice. Yes, I can. Yeah, I can. Yep, I can split up the dice. I can do it right now, split them up. Yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, like I could put bleed on this guy and do two damage to him, so he'll die on his own. Hmm. Yeah, like, I, I can't, I can't, like, my target would be the attack dice, right? But uh, other uh, other effects that don't need a target, you can split. So this one here is, where is it? Uh, I'm using Sonic Squall. It's just deal number damage to an adjacent baddie. But then again, because I'm using Arm Cannon, it can be any baddie. And then when I choose to use Disorienting Charge... I deal damage to any baddie, it says adjacent, then place it on them till the end of the next turn. Defensive stat reduced. So I probably should do it this way. Yeah, I'll do it this way. I'll do it this way. So two damage there, two damage there. This guy also gets bleed. As much as I want to do it to the boss to like offset his recover too, I think we're, oh, oh maybe that is better. I don't know. I don't know.
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anyways. Okay, uh, I'm done. Four. Uh, purple. So this guy is wanting to go after me, I guess, because I'm the closest. He'll roll two defense and his tyrant die, right? They always roll the tyrant die, even if they don't have someone to hit, right? I'm pretty sure. I know they roll the defense. I just forget. It's been so long since I played. Um, so he'll get one defense, got a bone. Uh, and then this is, I think it's weird. Uh, roll space turns to lava. And our space turns to lava. Oh no! All right, um, three. So her, she's going to this rock position, which is the closest rock position next to the strongest unit. So even though she targets whoever, she'll go here. And then she is targeting the strongest based on her uh, strongest opposing unit breaking ties here. Okay. So she's going to attack this guy, right? Uh, where's the, her die? Right here. Here. And here. All right. Okay, so my backup plan stuff costs an extra point. Uh, she's got a defense, and she hits for two. Even though he's just going to recover it anyway. All right, great. Uh, this guy here is going to bleed, but then recover one. His defensive stats reduced by one. So he's going to roll three attack dice. He's actually attacking roll. Because she is right there, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did I forget the rolling uh, on this guy has one less from rolling, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I forgot the rolling. I forgot the rolling through that guy. Whoops. Whoops. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Okay, bleed stays the whole time, right? Uh, this unit takes one true damage at the start of its turn, last entire battle. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, she would have rolled this way, I would make her, right? Not, not this way. This way. <laughs> okay, so this guy's attacking her. For three. Uh, four damage. One. Two, three, four. She's down to five. Yeah, five. A green guy. He bleeds one down to one health. Um, he wants to go here or here or here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely this way, right? And he rolls his defense. Uh, this defense. Not gonna help you, buddy. You're gonna bleed all over the place. Round two, fight. Okay, remember our backup plans cost an extra bone. Doesn't matter right now. Okay. I need to get off this. Uh, this little one true damage to burning my feet here. Hmm. The part that sucks is roll is now weaker than me. So if I go beside rock, rock's going to hit me, not her.
One, two. Oh, actually, I could stay here, right? Um, oh, no, I don't want to get... Yeah, yeah, I could stay here because I have my ice shoes, my ice pack. Yeah, we do have ice pack. Yes, we do. Um, should I just stay here and just, like, I have defense. So I, like, literally am doing nothing. Or do I move one and kill this guy? But this guy will keep hitting roll. But then roll's not hitting him back. So he's got to die eventually. I just need him to get on a lava space. This guy up here will die automatically. We have a new guy coming in soon, and the next round, I think, or at the end of this round. Um, hmm. This is the problem is, she's only rolling two dice against this guy, and this guy's recover two. So, like, I don't know how... I need to start damaging this guy. That's what I need to do, right? But I could wait another round. I could just move one, two... And chill right here. Or I move one more. And I just use three decks. And roll like three attack dice on the boss man. No, I can't range attack with arm cannon. Arm cannon only turns the blue dice to range that I've already used. Which sucks. Yeah. I wish I had that third blue die, but we lost that one day, which hurt. Because I would probably by now also have sidestep. And uh, percussive blaster, but uh, which would allow me a third blue die. Yeah, let's just go with it. The only problem is if I weaken him too much. Oh no, he's going to hit me. But she might want to move beside me. Hmm. Hmm. If both of you and Roll are adjacent to Rock, who will her target be? Uh, he is... He'll go first and he'll recover up to eight. It'll be him. Dominic, what up? Yeah, yeah, I'm still playing. Too many bones, they take forever. The way I play. <clears throat> or I should say the way I don't edit my videos. Um, my only fear is... I do a bit of damage to this guy. Great. He'll recover two of it, so probably all of it or some of it. He'll hit me back, knock me down. Which should still make me lower than him, but I do have three defense. But if he is still not the strongest, she's going to come after me. But what I worry is uh, the two of them are going to take rollout so quick. So I'm debating just sitting out for a minute, let her to keep, keep hitting him. But then it's like getting nowhere, right? Yeah, purple is rock. This is roll. Yeah, this is rolls. Uh, this is rolls die right here. So I think I'm gonna move here, and I'm gonna roll these three dice. Just attack. I don't have to apply them. I probably will. Maybe I'll get some bones. Oh, I got four damage. Yeah, I might as well apply that. Let's go yellow. The only problem is, he'll recover. No, he still hits me, though. 
but he might not break through my defense. And if that's the case, she'll come after me. She'll just go to here. She won't hit anybody. Is this bad to do what I just did? Should I not apply? He'll recover two of it back. He'll be at five. And I'm at six right now. Hmm. Oh, uh, you can't change, uh, I can only change lava to rock by chucking loot. I can't, uh, do it the other way around. So I'd really only want to do it if I'm on lava. In this case, situation. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I know, the new rules are a little wonky, man. It took me a while to understand all, all the options with the lava. There's a lot. And then all the way all the skills work with the lava, so all, all, there's so many of them. Yes, I'm going to do the damage, all of it. I, I think it's risky, I probably should do one less, but I'm going to do all of it. Four. This guy. Tyrant eye. Two defense. Two attack. He's going to recover two. Hopefully he rolls no defense. He rolled two defense. He is going to turn uh, roll spot into lava, my spot into lava. Everything's falling into lava. He's hitting me for three, so he didn't do any damage. Knocks away my defense. That's the problem. Now I'm the target for roll, which is what I didn't want, but I could have done one less and I would be fine, but I made the mistake. All right, so she's going to go. She'll go here. Because I'm the strongest unit. I have six health. She's going to the rock position beside me, which is only one. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. If I turn this to lava, she can't even come after me. That would be cool, but not happening. Okay, so she comes here. She's going to attack me. Uh, two attack, one defense. Uh, she rolled a bone, which doesn't do anything. Okay, my backup plans cost one extra again until her next turn. And she hits me for two. Okay, I'm no longer the strongest on the map. Beauty. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Okay. Uh, yellow. This guy, he will bleed one, but then recover one. He is going after roll because he's she's definitely closer. Three attack, one defense, four damage, one defense, four damage. Okay, roll is down to one health left. Uh, then he's on lava, so he'll take one damage. So now he'll die on his next turn. The green guy up here, he's just going to bleed out. End of the round, this guy comes in. It is a troll drunkard. With stench two, which I believe when he dies, he basically leaves a disgusting fart after, or something like that. Uh, he's coming in on melee position four, bottom of the queue, right? Because he's a five, a one pointer. Round three, Gale. Hmm. I'm on lava. I have four health left. Lava there. I'm gonna get cornered. I think I stay. I think I turn the floor into rock by tossing a loot or just ignore it with my ice pack actually. 
I'm gonna ignore it with the ice pack. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna stay where I am. And I'm gonna continue to work on this guy because she is gonna roll after him to here. Because he's the strongest unit now. And he's got defense, so I, I won't make him weaker than me. I'll make sure I don't this time. I don't screw it up. So as long as... Uh, yeah, I'm at four. I just got to keep him at five. He is at five. And so I just need to get rid of his defense. Oh, but he'll recover on his turn. So I do need to do some extra damage. So when he heals, he's at five still. So hopefully I can do four damage, but probably won't be able to, but whatever. Less is fine. Uh, oh yeah, four attack. Yeah, six dice, right? Yeah, I'm gonna target rock. Yellow is gonna bleed out on their turn and die, or uh, lava. I I'm fine. Yeah, he's, he's gonna bleed, right, before he recovers, I'm pretty sure. Because I think when things happen at the same time, I choose. Yeah, he's going to bleed now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yellow will bleed out. We'll be good. And this guy won't be able to reach me yet. And he'll go after Roll uh, is, is what will happen. So maybe he'll kill Roll. I was just rock is the only thing. Is if he keeps shielding up and recovering, uh, I might not be able to get enough damage through without these dice for extra offense. Uh, or a backup plan for extra offense. Okay, this is good. Shields are good. All right, three damage. Boom. One off here. Okay, perfect. Great. Okay. Uh, purpley dude. I mean, I could try to heal, but I don't want to be strongest. So he's going to recover too. And he's going to roll two and two, and his die. Oh yeah, uh, ice pack. I'll ignore the true damage on my turn. Yeah, ice pack for the true damage. I, that's the problem with the lava, is that it's covered, so I always forget about it. That's the one flaw, I feel. I wish the chips were bigger or something, or some other way to show lava underneath. But if you play enough Too Many Bones, you start to remember that you got to remember so many things in the stack sometimes. Or if you're a Cloud Spire player, remembering all the items and things attached to your guys that you can't see. Or all the chips in the stacks of spires. Whoa. Three bones. Two attack, so he'll knock out this die. And then he turns all of uh, lava, already lava, and this spot turns into lava. Okay, roll uh, is going to crowd surf to the rock space beside the strongest unit, dealing one damage to this guy and killing him. Uh, five point baddie down. Okay, uh, then she's going to roll her die, one defense, two attack against. Her enemy rock here. Hopefully she rolls two twos on her attack. Would be amazing. But she doesn't. Oh! Dude, I found some cool merch, bro! Dude! We get to draw loot! Holy crap. Of course, this is what you'd find at a, at a rock concert. Is some edible fungi. Heal yourself with two. It's light. Doesn't take up a loot spot. Not that I care. Dude, we got some merch. That's the first time I've ever seen that roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, two attack on rock. Okay, a bone doesn't do anything. Okay, that's good. I didn't want her to get defense so that this guy can probably kill her. And he'll go after her right now. She on lava? Nope. Okay, he's gonna attack for one against roll. Got her. So roll defeated. Now I gotta do all the work. To finish this stuff off. Okay. Round four. Uh-oh, we gotta hurry. So I need four damage. This guy's done. Please. Please. 
think I'm going to roll all this. So maybe I get a bone, and that bone will do an extra damage for, for vent canisters, maybe. Rock minus one HP? Oh, did I forget? Oh, the crowd surf. Guys, thank you. Ah, man. Forgot, forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crowd surf when he went when she went through. Yeah, yeah. She went this way. Definitely didn't go this way. I could have chose that way, but we're not choosing that way. Yeah, yeah. I forgot the crowd surf. Nice. Okay. Three damage. That's all I need. And we got it. Oh, and some nice defense too. Sweet. Oh yeah, we got this, guys. All right, so four damage, but I only need three. Boom. Tyrant dead. Normally that would be done with too many bones. But remember, all baddies must be defeated for encounter success. We're not finished yet. We got to defeat Stenchy Boy over here. We'll go right now. I'll move him this way, actually. <laughs> Probably should have ate the fungi too, but I'm being silly. All right, he hits there. Round five. I'm gonna eat the fungi. Whatever. Fungi. Two HPs. Back to full health. Oh, uh, yeah, ice pack. Ice pack, I forgot to use ice pack. Ice pack was used. Okay, everybody, we're all good. All right. Uh, or now I'm using it, I forget. I don't know. Did I not use it last turn? Yeah, I don't think I used it last turn. I probably forgot. Okay, so now new turn. I got to use it one last time probably if I can't finish this guy. Bones, bones, three damage. He's not dead yet. But then I will pop my backup plan of vent canisters dealing one true damage to an adjacent baddie, and we win, yay! Five rounds, yay! We did it, we did it! Boom, 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 boom. Lots of lava though, the whole map was almost lava. I think like uh, four chips or something, that's crazy. Yeah, true damage from battle plan, yeah! Boom, got him! Gale OP! Yeah. I definitely could play Gale better. We could have definitely, I think picking sidestep or like percussion blaster in that maybe would have been better, but this die kind of let me down a little bit, but maybe I shouldn't have bought that until I at least got percussion blaster. But then again, that bleed right there in the final battle was like pretty key, right? That like helped take some heat off with the other minions, right? But maybe I didn't need that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But that's it. We win. Gale versus rock and roll wins. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Cool stuff. But yeah. Yeah, final battle was OP. Yeah, it worked out, right? <laughs> it was the poison one would have been even better, right? Doing like two damage before the recovers. Uh, would have been nice. Now rack him up, let's go again. Uh, No. No. If I lost early, I maybe would do that, but not now. We won. We're good. I'm going to go chill, grab dinner, maybe have a celebratory uh, beer or something. I don't know. Great to have too many bones back on the table, though. I'll be honest, and back on the stream. Uh, it's been a while waiting. It's been killing me waiting for this to show up. Um, seeing everyone talking about it on the internets, having their copies for months. Um, but it's my bad. I could have had a copy a few months back if I just took a free copy from Chip Theory, but... Then again, I would have only had the base uh, undertow probably in like one gear lock, but uh, that's okay. I got it. I'm happy. So again, we have all the gear locks, all the new gear locks. I have uh, anyone who saw our unboxing or member only unboxing. I have like the, the extra boxes to add in cards. I have like promo packs. We have tons of stuff we can add in and do campaigns and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, but next I want to try another gear lock. So what I should do. Let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. Which gear lock out of the new ones um, should I play next? Oh, but there's more than four, isn't there? I got Riffle, though. I'll add into that. There's Riffle, Polaris, Carcass. 
right? There's like the strong fighting dude and the time guy, Figment. That's five. I can only put four in the pool. How do we do this? How do we do this? Yeah, I'll just play whatever one against another tyrant. Hmm. I don't I don't have them here, minion. They're they're all upstairs in boxes still. I put them all pulled them all away. Um so you'll just have to vote based on how could I do it? Oh, I have the tyrants though. We could just vote for the next tyrant. And then we pick a gear lock. Jesus. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Guys are crazy. Uh, okay. So, like, I need to know. I got, I got to figure out like which which tyrant to play against next, and then we got to figure out a gear lock for that tyrant. So it's like I don't know. Hmm. And then is my next stream just solo? Or is my next stream with two players? Yeah. All right, how about this? How about this? Uh, how bad is Cinder? Cinder really bad? He's like sh shorter, right? I bet he's bad. I haven't read his cards. Like I, I have not played it. I've only played one game against uh, Domina, but I don't know much about Polaris Carcass or all the the other guy or whatever his name is. I forget his name. It starts with an S, right? Cinder is bad. Really hard. GD, good night. Thank you for stopping by. Okay. Static, that's it. I knew it started with an S. I just couldn't remember <laughs> the name. <laughs> okay, so let's say Do Domina is our next Tyrant, okay? This one some people recommended to try as your first Tyrant from the box, so it's a even more and more complicated, I think. Um, but, and it has all baddie types, which is so annoying. So annoying to have, like, bogs with all these two, but... Uh, okay. So... Someone just said, Dominic says, Domina can be quite nasty for Polaris if the right scout is at her side, preventing her from using the backup plan. Okay. Okay, that's then that, Dominic, perfect. That helps us eliminate one gear lock, right? So that's what we'll do, that's what we'll do. We'll put all the other gear locks in a pole and which one should face Domina, okay? So our, uh, Dominic, would you say, or anybody, would you guys say uh, all the other gear locks have a chance in solo against Domina if we if we put Riffle in there. Riffle. No, let's do Figment. Figment. Riffle. I, I want to try them all. So to me, it doesn't matter which order. Um, and then we got Carcass. I, I, I'm hopefully spelling that right. Um, and the other one is, we were just saying it's static, right? Yeah, that's the thing though. If we don't see that tyrant, if we don't see a tyrant encounter and we don't randomly get the right uh little scout or whatever on the wave and eliminate it, then we're in trouble, right? And it's all random, which is annoying. Okay, okay. Which earlock should we play next? 
Okay, I put a poll in the chat. You guys decide. I don't have the gear locks beside me. I'm not going to go get them and bring them all out and go over every single gear lock. That's too much. Um, but those who know them or who are just interested, even if you're just interested in a gear lock based on the name, the picture, hearing about them. Um, I don't know enough. I know Carcass is about like cooking baddies up. He's the cooking guy. I think he takes pieces of their baddies and then uses them um, on his like cards or whatever. Um, and then uh, Static was like the fighting one. I, I don't remember what exactly his thing was. And then uh, Figment's about like time travel-ish manipulating the any meter and like um, uh, I haven't played any of them yet so I don't know. I'm just trying to remember based on what I was reading. Uh, he also has his ghost thing, this ghost chip. I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, so this is just for fun. Just pick whoever and we'll just figure it out. Like, it's this is the one I'm going to open next and learn. So whichever one it is, I'll learn it, I'll play it, I'll practice it, and then we'll, I'll schedule the next stream uh, once I feel that I know how the gear lock works. At least most of it. I'm okay if I don't understand some of the skills that I've never played. We'll figure those out. You guys can help me on stream. And we'll have some fun playing together, but uh, I just need to know which one I'm now next reading and, and practicing with before the next stream. The next solo stream. If the next stream is a two-player stream, I'll play a different gear lock and we'll save whatever one you guys pick for facing uh, Domina in the, next, uh, in the next solo stream. So you're voting for who you want to see solo take on Domina and her scouts. And it'll be longer. It'll be a longer playthrough for sure um, than today. Definitely be longer. Seven, seven points, ten days max. So we'll we'll play it careful. We'll figure it out. Static is doing nothing and charge for a big turn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's building up a combo meter. He's like the fighter, the, the guy from Street Fighter or something. He's like a Street Fighter reject. <laughs> Static, ew. Why are you guys telling me I shouldn't have bought that one? <laughs> I should have did this poll before I backed the crowdfunding uh, campaign, right? <laughs> Like whatever one doesn't get them uh, gets the bottom of the pole. Uh, that's the one I don't back. <laughs> I don't add to the add to my cart. <laughs> oh man. So Dominic says figment figment can be a bit challenging in solo since he's a ranged gear lock. That's true. I don't have to play them all solo. I wish you would have said that before. Maybe I take figment off. But I mean, we could just try him out and see how it goes. We don't have to win. Oh yeah, the Trove Loot, eh? You want to see the Trove Loot? It would have been chewable vitamins permanent at the end of each of your turns. You may remove one static effect die from yourself, which would, would be useless in this playthrough. Useless. Uh, this basically says, throw me in the garbage to turn uh, a lava chip you're standing on into rock. This is great. This would be great against the bogs who are putting poison on you and stuff. It's great loot, but it's, it would suck for this playthrough, right? <laughs> my luck today. At least we won. Oh my god. I had such bad luck today. For trying to get what I want, for pulling the right baddies, getting the loot that need, was needed. But we did have good luck with this. This die coming up is like, it was perfect. Getting some free merch. Felt good. Felt good, man. Right before, right before roll died. Yeah, the ice pack was pretty, pretty key too. I mean, I could have tossed the one loot and tossed the other loot, like whatever it was. Um, or a heal would have been nice too instead, but. Cinder is incredibly hard and the tyrant battle takes forever. So, Timothy, who's the gear lock out of all the new ones that is best to go solo against Cinder? Is it nobody? Or is it some gear lock from the past? Like, who, who would you pick out of all the gear locks you know to take on Cinder? I know nothing about Cinder, but if you're saying he's super hard, like, who would be able to handle him?
Who would you pick out of curiosity? Or would you just never play him solo? Would you always play with more players at the table? My opinion on Gale, I like Gale. Um, again, I, I, I like Gale's, here's what I think. Gale is fun. In theory, she's like, uh, in my opinion, a crappier nugget for solo, but still has all the tools you need. Technically, I have heal dice. So I, she has some heal. She has heal built in her backup plan. She has damage in her backup plan. She has the potential of range, but it's very weak and very limited and is so luck based. And if your dice all exhaust that you use, like uh, that's kind of lame. Um, her stats are nice. I like the, the, the attack and move stuff. I did get to try this out. I did try hit and run and sidestep in a previous playthrough. That was super cool to be able to like move away at the right time, get off a lava chip, make the baddie go on lava. It worked out. Um, she is cool, but I, I would love to play her in, in a multiplayer game. I think it'd be way more fun. Because then I could be using this range to help my other allies. I could play a more supporty role, get some healing going, you know, mess around with the baddies a little more, push them into my uh, teammates to help them reach them and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the status effect stuff's kind of cool. But I just feel like the whole idea of like needing a backup plan to unlock the chance to like spend a training point on a die feels bad. The heal that's like a luck based heal in her backup plan, annoying. Um, but the, the ability to like ignore status effects playing against bog type baddies or against any tyrant that involves like you getting, uh, you know, bad dice put on you. The fact you can turn into like gasket is kind of crazy actually. Now that I think about it. Um, She's clever, she's cool, she's interesting. And fine to put as a gear lock in a basic set. She reminds me of like Duster, the way Duster was in Undertoes. Like Stanza was so complicated. Duster was more basic, but Duster sucked, especially solo. And Gale kind of is okay solo at least. And is basic enough to figure out. She's not that complicated. But uh... Also a shorter playthrough, you don't get to see her like changing dice to what she wants and her lock slot's kind of sucky, but uh, she's okay, it just doesn't blow me away. She just feels like uh, kind of a not as good nugget for solo, but I've never played her in co-op, so I like, I, she might be amazing. Might be amazing in that situation. Like giving, giving positive effects to your, your teammates is, is super cool. I picture as like just the, you know, the range background wizard. Like that's what I want to play as her has. That's like staying away from the fight, hitting with range, you know, dealing with enemies as she needs to, but also healing and giving bonuses to your opponents, but also protecting them by like, you know, pushing enemies around or, or blocking spaces and stuff. Yeah, Gale doesn't blow me away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. She's cool, but she feels like just, you know, not that interesting. I'm sure Figment's more interesting. But again, they shouldn't be interesting for a player who's played so many gear locks and has played for years. It should be pretty basic. This should be very new player friendly. And she feels like she's in that kind of range. And she's still powerful enough that she should have the answers to deal with whatever's needed. It's just not that great but i mean we just won so on uh losing a day and on a short playthrough we still pulled it out against big health baddies so i don't know three decks to attack not bad four health i think it's good but yeah i don't know i, I want to try some other builds like go a little crazier but yeah that's cool all right let's close the poll thank you everyone that voted I, I knew it. I knew Riffle would win. I don't know why everyone wants to see Riffle. <laughs> David, thank you. No worries. No worries. Nice to see you. Uh, well, you breeze through that playthrough, says Yogi. <laughs> uh, David says, I would play Tantrum for Cinder since he can disable skills on baddies and can kill a lot of baddies and take some hits. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, Dominic agreed. That's what I think. Yeah, she's a good all rounder. Uh, depends on what she's is needed. She can do. Yes, exactly. Which I feel is like she, that's why I'm saying she's okay solo, but not OP or anything. She's okay solo, and I see why they put her so difficult. But definitely, she's a safe pick to play with any other gear locks in a campaign or whatever or an adventure. Uh, you know, with one, two, or three other players at the table. Having Gale there, she can. Yeah, fill whatever gap is needed. Um, you know. <laughs> Whenever you do play carcass, you should bring snacks made from the cookbook. Okay, Minion, I, you're telling me to eat now? So uh, already I'm going to take 12 hours to play that, that run with a longer tyrant. And now you want me to be eating while I'm doing that? Like, come on. That was going to be a 14 hour playthrough. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, man. I see no issues. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just tell Mel she needs to get cooking. Hey, 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 all right. <laughs> Stream cooking the snacks. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to take a break. Let's go over to the kitchen and let's cook up a snack. Like a little halftime show. We just, we just switch scenes to like a cooking setup. Tell her I said it though. She doesn't blame you though. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. So next solo, too many bone stream. I'm going to learn riffle and we're going to play against Domina. I'll at least play it once off stream, so I kind of like, I played against Domino one time, but I still am not like, I don't know if I played correctly, the, that Tyrant fight's a little weird too, but uh, it is cool how you can try it, she has three scout friends that'll show up in the final fight, but if you run into her Tyrant encounters along the way, you can possibly eliminate those um, scouts, so there's less guys in the final fight, which is cool, and they're all orcs, so there's some raiding involved, uh, possibly, um, so obviously you want to eliminate some before the final fight. Oh, Mel's there. She's listening. Turn it into a 24-hour stream by cooking each recipe you get in the game or however it works. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks for voting, playing along. Uh, rules, questions, choices. Um, Suffering through my ranting, my bad luck, or my good luck, too. I had all of it in there. Um, but yeah, if you notice any mistakes again, leave them down below in the comments. Um, and yeah, stick around. We'll have more Too Many Bones on the channel if you're itching for more Too Many Bones. Uh, I do have playlists down in the video description with all of our previous playthroughs of anything Too Many Bones related. Uh, so you can check those out there. And uh, I don't know, hopefully it'll be this week, but if it's not, the next Too Many Bones plays through maybe this weekend or maybe next week. So um, I'll see where I can fit it in, but just stay tuned. And the best way not to miss it is to subscribe, turn on notifications. So you'll get a, a notification uh, whenever we go live and you can just swipe it away if it's something you're not interested in, but that way you won't miss it or at least subscribe and just check back at your subscription feeds later. Uh, Cause once I schedule it, it'll show up in there. But I'll probably schedule it like a day or two in advance. Uh, I just got to figure out where I can fit it in. Because I do want to feel a little comfortable with the gear lock before playing. So I don't want to lock it in and then not have enough time to like play it. And I want to feel rushed. So I want to enjoy it. Um, so Timothy says, I've only played Sim Cinder with Figment and Gale. And the just Tyrant battle took over two hours. We did manage to win. I'm not sure who would be best solo against him. Oh, okay. I appreciate the information. So maybe when we play against Cinder, it's like a two-day thing? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, too many bone sessions can be really long, especially streaming. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, I don't know. It could be, yeah, it'll be around the same time as this one is. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thanks for the super chats today. Thanks to our new members. Uh, thanks to everyone supporting the channel, allowing me to do this. I appreciate it. Uh, and if you stick around, you get kicked to our next stream where you can set a reminder for that if you're interested. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. Thanks to all 89 of you who have clicked the like button already. Thank you so much. Anyways, enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.